you guys create something together. It's mm -hmm. not a competition. It's not like you do this, I do that. It's not you pay this. Oh my God, you, I pay that. It's not my, it's my money. No, it's like we're a team. We're in this yeah. together. If you're living it like that guy was, like doing drugs and women and da -da -da, yeah, it's gonna catch up to you. You might not see it right now because you're in the midst of it all, but when you get older with age, you're definitely gonna notice how those young years of you like burning yourself out are gonna catch up. Thinking like before when you probably did tour with him and then you started, that it was like at first where you like, what was this motherfucker doing before I started talking? <laughs> it's, it's almost like a trans, you know, like a transaction kind of thing. Like, you know, you do for me and then I'll do for you. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's not relationships are about it. If you're, if you're with somebody who, who's not there to support you, raise children, or when you get sick or when you lose your finances or whatever, it's like, then you're with the wrong person. <laughs> that's the scary part of getting older. Cause you were 25, probably like, oh, this is fun. At 26, it's like, when I'm growing up, getting older, I'm adulting. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm wifey as fuck. So welcome back. Thank you for Thank stopping you by our, our show again. We talked about getting you on like a little bit ago. You weren't in, you, you weren't even in the country. You're like, oh, I'll be back maybe in the su late summer, mid summer, and then so now you're back. So this I know when I got that message, I was like, all right, should I book my flight early? Uh, I, I, like, uh, so I, I like that. One day like you will have enough right. money. We'll fly you back in. Right? I could just be like, guys, you guys want me on? Then yeah. this is my feet. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like it. I like it. Got to respect it. Um, how you been? How's everything? I've been good. The past three months have been life-changing. I think the beginning of this year is until now. Like, mm. 2023 has <sighs> been a transformation for me. There has been a lot happening this year for all of us, um, especially with just society in general. Yeah. It's been going crazy. The economy, the... Uh, state of the of the, <laughs> the United States, but the world's conscious. The world, but everything. Uh, it's also been a really big learning, uh, kind of a big journey for all of us, just to kind of adapt and kind of figure out how to how to go with the flow. So yeah, man, uh, yeah, it's been a great. But also, like, we're getting older. We're getting to the point where like we want to buy homes, like we want to yeah. like establish ourselves, and it's like it's so hard. You want structure. You want grounding. You do want structure, like. Like, damn, I'm growing up. Adulting like, is not fun <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's like, but like you, you walk, like you go, like you want stability. Like even like yeah. for me, like you wake up in the morning, I have like my routine. I take my AG1 greens. I mix it up with my water. I do like a dash of like lemon. You've been doing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, so good. proud. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a sponsorship. So I'm actually glad you're bringing <laughs> up this idea. You're, you're still taking yours, right? Yeah, of course. I took it this morning. I took it all week. And then, and that's kind of my routine, which goes to back what we were saying, like, like mm -hmm. I'm at a point where I'm like I just want to wake up. I want to get my rest. I want to get my eight hours of sleep. Take my vitamins. Work out. Get my sweat and drink my water and just kind of be healthy. That's what I was sending Chris right now. Yeah, you yeah, know, so absolutely. Yeah, trying to it. trying to create the. It's funny because as we're getting older, we realize how our bodies aren't um, equipped to handle the type of abuse we used to put yeah. on. Yeah. Like 20, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're still a little bit on the younger end. How do you know? You're I'm 26. She's, she, how are you guys? What are you guys We're now? 30. We're 30. Yeah, yeah. But at 25 is when I started slowing down. And everyone out there is like, oh my God, at 25, I had this. Dude, I got to work <laughs> like all day long and then I got to deal with other shit. This guy doesn't stop working. It's not like it used to be. This shit's fucking hard. But even so, even so, my body's just more tired all of a sudden, so like I take my rest no, very I agree, seriously. Me too. I do take my AG one as well, and this is a sponsorship. Yeah, for sure. Uh, where is it that they can go to get the the? the so it'll be linked in the description. It's AG one. Uh, drink AG one. Dot com. AG one slash, slash the coffee, coffee breakup. Break we'll yeah, you get the subscription. You also get uh five. You get you get like a handful of travel the, packs. The travel packs as well as a free vitamin D, vitamin K, yeah. the kind of the drops, like the drops that go in. Which I always tell, like, especially for men, it's so important. Vitamin D, testosterone levels, vital. Really? Yeah, super important. <laughs> yeah. Chris, have you been taking yours? I no, I, I well, mean, I did it on the back. And no, it's I so I take important. it because I I'm, I get, I care about my nutrition yeah. and everything that I put into my body, which kind of goes back to what we're talking about now. Like I I really read labels now. <laughs> yeah, <and> I <laughs> want to yeah. make sure I know what's in my body now. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it, it, I like putting in that effort and, and and doing it every single day. I mean, for me, it gives me some sort of self purpose because at least I'm like, damn, I'm doing something for me. Yeah. yeah like no, I'm your body will out. thank you. You'll see it in your exactly. body. Exactly. And the older we get, I think the more we appreciate that. And it's funny because I was watching, like there's this filter or there was this filter on uh, TikTok where it's like, it tells you like how you look when you're <gasps> older. Stop. And I saw it. I was like, oh shit, I got to put on sunscreen now. Yeah. Like, wow. The eye cream. The eye cream at night. I'm like, I look mad serum. old though. Like I looked old. You know how some people just didn't look it? I looked it. I but supposedly, it. I saw on TikTok that 
that filter just estimates how long you're actually gonna live. And I was like, well, I'm gonna live till I'm old as fuck because I looked old, oh, like an anciana. Really? Imagine if it didn't change you at all. Your time's coming. Do you think you're gonna look like like you're gonna be like a very youthful older woman? In terms of like the looks, I, I think, think my so. energy is always gonna be youthful. Yeah, but I sometimes I feel like my energy now is very old and wise. So I don't know okay. how I'm actually gonna be when I'm older. Mm. I'll tell you this though: I don't think I want to alter my aging. Like, do I want to? Do I want to take care of myself and my skin now? But I hope that I can stick to what I'm saying now. And as I grow older, I don't try to stop it. You get me? Like, you okay. know how people are anti-aging this, anti-aging that. You, you can't stop it. aging. You want to embrace it. Yeah, because I feel like when I look at my mom, for example, and she has wrinkles and she looks older, like, I, I think my mom is beautiful. Mm. When I've looked at my grandma, like, I think it's beautiful that they look old because yeah. it's, it <laughs> says a story. It says, like, okay, you've lived life. True. Your your wrinkle here says that you've been through this, you've been through that. So I, I do want to take on after them and, like, embrace my aging. I don't really want to fight against it because it's something that, we're gonna mm. lose the battle every time. You're yeah. gonna age. You're gonna look old. <laughs> but, but so you wouldn't think you would consider getting work done or getting certain procedures done, even if it's like on a minuscule level, to, to kind of because it's one thing to age grace like to age gracefully, but it's also to like what if you look older than you really are, like by a lot. Let's say you're in like your forties and people are like, oh. But you don't think there's like natural ways to prevent or at least take care of your skin and your well being? Sure. Vitamin E. Right. My mother, for years, if you look at her, she's like almost seven years old. You look at her, her skin is better than mine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And she said the secret was she would get one of those vitamin E capsules, the one that you take, like the vitamins. Yeah. No She way. would bite off the tip. She would squeeze it, and then she would put that, apply it onto her skin. The powder. That's what I'm, saying. I'm, I'm kidding. No, it's not a powder. It's like a, it's a. Um, what a soft gel. It's like a gel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You bite into it. She would pour it in her hand, and then she would rub it on her oh. skin. Dude, and you've seen my mother. Yeah. She's an older woman, but her skin is like. Like nice. That's what I'm saying. I think mm. before I jump to a procedure, I would take Try the, the natural, natural remedies. Route. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I like that. How about you, boys? Like Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not. E- I'm very open to if it's f- especially for men. If it's like a, uh, like a hormonal, like testosterone, you know, mm-hmm. HCG, HGH, like all that stuff. I'm super open to it, and I feel like if it's if it's done in a safe manner with your doctor, I hell yeah, I'll jump on that. Let, shit. let me ask you a question. You ever see these like really older guys, but like you know that they try to take care of themselves and they dye their hair, and then you <laughs> see as like you just know that the hair color isn't natural. Where it's like, super like they'll black. be white, yeah, they'll they'll be <laughs> have white black. hair, and they dye it like jet black. Yeah, have you ever seen those guys? I've seen, of course. Would you do that? Would no. you try to cover your grays or would you embrace your? I feel grays? like gray hair, like like that's that's dude for a guy. You can you can rock that. The salt and pepper it, look. Yeah, yeah, salt yeah. and pepper. If you take care of yourself, you're fit, you're healthy, whatever. Yeah, I'll rock that. The salt and pepper. I would as well. Yeah, I would have gray hair. Yeah. You would. I, you would see. You would look pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I think with cool. gray hair. Yeah. I honestly, <laughs> yeah. I've seen women on TikTok Gangsta. who are older <laughs> and they're giving like advice and things like that. And she has like it's one specific woman. She has like gray hair. And every time she jumps on TikTok and she's speaking about any advice, I listen to her because I'm like, she has gray hair, bro. Yeah. She knows what she's talking about. Yeah. She's older. It gives you like that <laughs> wizard like. Right, like right. feeling, you like, get me. She must know. She yeah, must yeah. know she something. Must know some She's been through something. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's exactly. How I see. All right, well, look. Enough about that. Um, before you were setting everything up, we were talking about the whole traveling situation. You and your man have been traveling nonstop. Your man yes. for work, and you, kind of just figuring it out. Yes. Right. How's how's that been? Because you were talking about how hectic it can be. All the, it's kind of like almost like first world problems. Because when you think about, oh my god, I have to travel so much. Sounds vague. Of course, that it sounds vague when you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I have to catch ten flights this month. But <laughs> everyone complains about their job, yeah. right? And right. that is my partner's job, and yes. I have decided to live that lifestyle with him. So yeah, I can complain about it because <laughs> it is tiring, okay, you know, okay. being on the road but and yeah, traveling. Yeah, like that. yeah. It's a lot of like. There's times where, like, for example, like he'll play, he'll DJ until like 5 a.m. Our flight's at 9 a.m. So it's like we leave the club, go to the hotel, shower, maybe an hour nap, and then wake up and it's like we're catching the other flight on the way home. That is hectic. But why, why so immediate? Cause because like sometimes we have, he has other like gigs. Oh. He's, for example, I'll give you the perfect example. Okay. On now he goes to Italy, right? He goes to Italy and he has to come back here by Wednesday, but he's leaving on Monday. So he leaves Monday to Italy, plays for um, this designer, and then he has to be back here on Wednesday because he leaves to Colombia on Thursday. 
So mind you, That's imagine crazy. going all the way to Italy yeah. Monday, playing on Tuesday, coming back on Wednesday, and then from Wednesday from the U.S. you go to Colombia. It is tiring. Let me ask you, and what does he, how does he feel about that? I mean, other than, I mean, he must love it to a certain degree, but does it ever really catch up to him that he's like, yeah, <sighs> yeah. He's yeah. human. I'm human too. Sometimes I'm like, babe, I actually can't handle it. That's why I told you before we started recording that I've started to be more wise because I'm like, you know what? Like, I understand it's your job, but if I need to do the things I need to do, sometimes I'm going to have to stay home. I'm going to have to not go to every gig, not go to every country we go visit because sometimes it's exciting because we're like, oh, my God, we haven't been here. It's going to be so fun. We have a day before the show, but sometimes I have to prioritize other things, so... Um, that's awesome because, uh, so does he have like a tour manager? Does he do everything himself? Do you help him like with the gigs that he does or are we speaking to the manager? <laughs> <laughs> are you the one? I'm the boss. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, he tours with two other DJs. Okay. They're a group of three. So oh. they keep each other company and I tag along and they have like different managers and stuff. That's so cool. Well, when I was younger, I was obviously very much into like the electronic music scene yeah, and yeah. Yeah. I would travel to different countries to see yeah. artists and I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would go to the, the Europe and stuff like that and, mm-hmm. and, and the West coast. And I loved it. It was awesome. It was but I saw like the, some of the tour schedules from like the DJs when they would like nonstop. Yeah. So I can kind of like see every two days was a yeah. different city. Yeah, yeah that's like, how it is. That, that's really. And then I was watching the documentary on with, with Da Vinci. You know what happened to him, mm-hmm. and he was on tour, and he hated it. Right, like it was so much, and it was so much. Like you, you the food, your diet, you can't really work out like that. You're always mm-hmm. on the go with lack of sleep, et cetera. The partying, and, and it's like your calendar is always filled yeah. with something. And well, Chris, that's what I was club. telling you, that it's hard to keep a routine. Yeah. I think my partner and I do a great job because we've, have, we've cut down things along the way. Like, I'll give you an example. When I first started touring with him or just we started dating, I was still drinking and I was still taking it. I was like, I'm going there to party. Mm. Like, he was working, but I was like, yo, I'm going to party. This is yeah. a fun-ass time. But eventually, down the road, I was like, I can't be drinking every time this guy works. So I'm going to be an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I it. actually come down to the point now, two years and a half later, I don't drink at all. Like, if I have a sip, it's like a miracle. I just don't drink. And that's what allows me to have that hectic schedule because mm. I'm not going to the party and partying and doing drugs and drinking like everybody else. I'm actually just there drinking water or kombucha or something. Yeah. And then the next morning, <laughs> even if I sleep three hours, I'm going to wake up better than everybody else because yeah. I have not drank. Yeah. I can drink a green juice and get back on track. I try to eat as healthy as healthy as I can, which I do. So there's things that I think if you're living that lifestyle, like they are, the DJs are working. If you're living it like that guy was like doing drugs and women and da-da-da, yeah, it's going to catch up to you. You might not see it right now because you're in the midst of it all, but when you get older with age, you're definitely going to notice how those young years of you like burning yourself out are going to catch yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with, with Avicii, he, he had a, he was sick. He had like an illness, but, but mm-hmm. the, the, touring going on stage and being like that, that really up. yeah yeah that really does affect you and there's a lot of B- djs who like they like producing but they don't like going on tour Traveling. as much or vice versa yeah right you know mm-hmm. so interesting what do you, does he what does he have a preference on does he like touring does he like i think producing? he loves playing like i think he actu- loves playing like yeah. actually djing and putting on a show i like a performer that's how i would label what sick. he loves the most he loves every aspect of music okay. but i think when it comes to giving a performance and giving an experience and let's say for example putting the event together from the marketing for the decorations i think that's what the creative side that he enjoys the most that's so sick so and it's very sorry to interrupt no, no, you, no, and it's very um eye-opening to witness as well as like a bystander for me because we'll go to these events and we'll be like oh yeah whatever it was cool but there's actually so much that goes behind the scenes right the little thing. detail by detail that i'm like yo it's just tiring. <laughs> yeah. Do you sometimes like look at him and like maybe you're in the crowd or you're like far away and like, man, that's my man. Like, yeah, dang, I'm like, he's fucking so fucking cool. <laughs> you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I can't wait to get home. Let me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, fuck. yeah, let me let me ask you, do you feel was this the first time that you actually went like with him for that for that long touring? No, I think for so the past go. year it's been like back to back, back to back. So and you guys have been dating for how long? Two years and a half now. Two years. Oh. Do you feel now that you've been touring with them? Has it strengthened your relationship even more? I want to believe yes. Yes. Yeah? Yes, because we have a conception about DJing or DJs and how they are, right? Like, Mm -hmm. that's the truth. You'll be like, a DJ, nah, he's a man whore, or or he's going to be doing drugs, or, you know, you always have that, like, Right. Thought in the back of your head. Well, that's why I asked, because I'm thinking, like, before when you probably did tour with him and then you started, that it was, like, at first where you, like, what was this motherfucker doing before I started? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
think I had to, what were you doing before me? For me, it was more like it made me comfortable and he made me comfortable to show me okay. what he actually does when he goes. And it's, he enjoys himself. I'm not saying that he doesn't. But it just gives me that security after I've witnessed it that I know what goes on and I know how he handles himself. Where now, when there are the times that he goes on tour for five or six days that I don't go, I don't have that thought in the back of my head anymore because I have that trust now because mm. I've been there and I know what he acts with me there or not with me there, yeah. which a lot of these other people might not relate to because they're not, some DJs don't take it as work. They take it as like, I'm having fun Play, and I'm just yeah. like getting fucked up. Do you think that, well, I mean, I want to assume that that lifestyle is kind of difficult to maintain a serious relationship, isn't it? Maybe not for him. Honestly, but not for us. Right, I'm, no, I'm going to tell you the truth. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because he's obviously different like he's bringing you along and you're like a part of this yeah you know? but mm. uh, was it always like that for him like maybe like before was he able to actually maintain something or is it like man i finally found someone that well from our conversations i'm his first real girlfriend right, right. but i don't think it was because of his job i think it was just his maturity levels okay. and just when we found each other we both sacrificed things that and we let go of a lot of traits that maybe we're holding on like holding us back in the past, you get yeah. me? But I don't think it's been hard to maintain the relationship, like the seriousness or like the commitment. I think if anything, it's made it stronger. I think it's made us stronger. Yeah. I'm having like a little moment right now because uh, we sat down. This is the third time we're sitting down. But I know. There's been times in the past <laughs> where you've spoken about the situation, the relationship, when you express certain insecurities and certain vulnerabilities. And now, fast forward, it's like it's so refreshing, and I'm very proud of you for Aww, being where you, you are. Both of you, actually, yeah, and thank obviously you. him as well because it takes both of you guys. But to be where you are now, where like, yeah, he can play for weeks at a time, and I'm like, I know who my man is. And yeah. obviously, the past year and a half and change has uh, has obviously created that that bond between you guys. Mm -hmm. But it's very that's r you're r you know proof of of what growth is all about. Well, that's a lot of work, about. of course. Yeah, from the last time that I sat in the chair across yeah. from you guys <laughs> yeah. to now, it's been like a year, and I say four to five months. Yeah, and there's a lot of growth. That's why I mentioned like letting go of a lot of traits, mm. you know, because there are traits that we bring on from each relationship to the next yeah. one to the next yeah. one. Mm. And then you see like, okay, this is not serving me. This is not serving my current relationship. I'm gonna have to let this go mm. or transcend it into something positive. And I think. When I spoke about my insecurities last time that I was here, yeah. that I was like, oh, you know, with girls and this and that, I think it takes a lot of mental work and a lot of trust and like individual and partner work because yeah. he had to do a lot for me to feel comfortable because I needed that because of my past. That's amazing. That's amazing because then I, I'm just in, in shock, to be honest with you, because <laughs> the stereotype that you were talking about, like most DJs, I mean, they're always traveling. Yeah. Like, how do you even maintain one? So he goes, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to show you. Yeah, and like he literally took it. you to create that security for you, and it's almost like I remember a long time ago we <laughs> had someone who I think was dating a promoter or something. <laughs> um, who was it? Come here, give me, give me here. <laughs> wow, I'm feeling so salty. Keeping secrets when I'm sitting across okay. from you. Oh, she okay. Had her hair sli she has to do this. <laughs> you over there? <laughs> yeah, she was dating. Okay, so there was this one girl that we had before. I think that you know she was talking about how I think it was a promoter. I like think it was a DJ. Or a DJ also, something. Yeah. And was she was DJ. saying, like, no, but I trust them. You know, I know the stereotype. They broke up, like, two weeks after that two episode. Weeks like, before I, the episode I aired, it's like, hey, do you think Stop. we can take it down? We're like, uh, no. Submit. <laughs> <laughs> upload. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you hear stories like that, and, you know, the stereotype and the environment. But, again, you know, he really did, you know, kind of step outside of whatever that stereotype is. So they exist. Ladies and gentlemen, they, they do. Yeah, they yeah, they exist. Well, I didn't say this is my thing. You shouldn't put anybody, how would I say, on a pedestal to it. Like, they would never. Maybe that's a mistake that she made. Like, they would never. I believe that my partner would not do that. Can my partner wake up tomorrow and decide to do that? Well, that is actually on him. Like, I can't control right. that. You get me. Maybe that's where she kind of failed coming on camera and being like, oh, he will fucking never do that. Because you she never did. know what somebody would do. You get yeah, me? She was very proud of it. And Life was like, oh, let me humble yeah. you real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me teach you a lesson. I, I think it was a snippet where she was like raving about him. And it, we never posted the snippet. <laughs> they, they had broken up. <laughs> He's the best guy ever. <laughs> Fucking broken up. Aww. No, no, no. Yeah. It sucks. But the it's coffee like, breakup. Yeah. You come yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, true. Man, I, I, I do have to ask because like uh, I would see your post and you're traveling and like, I was like, man, like this is, this is amazing. This what are you doing? Life. Yeah. But I'm like, like this is not. This is not cheap. Like, how is he affording all of this? But then again, I know your man is a DJ. 
So can you talk to me a little bit about the, the, the dynamics when it comes to does he like pay for it? Does he have maybe like a budget where he can bring you along? It's part of the or, expenses. Or have you expanded? Because I know before you had a couple of projects. How has that been going on? Do you have a support system yourself or is he the one that's helping you out when it comes to the travel? Okay, so when it comes to the traveling, since it's his work, he does pay for most of the expenses when I travel. Sure, yeah. Yeah, me the money. He's got to do them anyways. That makes sense. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's like an extra person at this point. Yeah, yeah of course like, he has to budget me in like anybody else, but my partner has never made me feel like his money's his money. You get me? Yeah. Okay. It's always like when he makes money or I make money, it's like it's our money. Mm-hmm. And well, this is how, what I can pay for this month. And this is, you can come on these trips with me, which he honestly wants me to go to each and every single yeah. one of them. You get me? Not bad, of and course. if he budgets it in, then I'm more than welcome to. But I think, because you guys want to mention this topic, yeah. I think for me, there's a lot of more things to bring to the table than financial abundance, okay. right? And even though my partner does pay for the majority of the things when we're traveling and my tickets and this and that, there's a lot that I bring during that process that it's not financial, but it is beneficial to the lifestyle that we're living. You get me? Yeah. Okay. So it's like when you see a very successful man, but he has that powerful woman next to him who's the one keeping them grounded, who's the one putting the energy in behind the scenes when it comes to a lot of the relationship. Mm-hmm. You get me? Yeah. So I do think that um, when it comes to financial dynamics and who puts the money in and who takes the money out, I think we both feel comfortable that when the money comes in, it is our money. And I, I also, I'm not those type of girls that are like, oh, just buy me this and buy me that. And like, I want shoes and bags. I think for me, it's about the money that we get, we upgrade our lifestyle. Like, we upgrade on food. We upgrade on the places that we go. We upgrade on the spa. Like, lifestyle things that actually nurture me and nurture my soul. Do I love, like, fun, like material things? Sure, whatever. But that's well, not where our it. money goes. I'll tell you that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that because, and the only reason I brought it up because because finances is such a hot topic in, in relationships. And it's like, and it's it's almost like a trans, you know, like a transaction kind of thing. Like, you know, you do for me and then I'll do for you. And it's like, mm-hmm. but that's not relationships are about. And we've talked about it plenty of times. We've had guests on. We've seen videos. We've seen clips where it's like, ideally, your partner is supposed to add to your life. And when you guys come together, you guys create a beautiful, you guys create something together. It's mm-hmm. not a competition. It's not like you do this, I do that. It's not you pay this. Oh, my God. You, I pay that. It's not my, it's my money. No, it's like we're a team. We're in this yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Is that how you and your relationship is? Well, I mean, yeah, like me and Claudia, I mean, I make, a, we're not married and stuff like that, but like I make a little bit, I make more than her, but it's like, if I can do it, I'll always do it. Exactly. Like, I, I That's do what my boyfriend thinks as well. And so obviously I'm, if I had more resources, obviously I would give more, I, but I do, I give everything I have. Mm-hmm. And that's, everything that's, can. Huh? I, gi- can. I give whatever I can. And one month it might be X amount and the next month it might be this amount. And if it's a trip for her birthday, I'll pay for everything. If it's something, you know, because I want to, you know, not because she expects it of me, not because I expect Mm -hmm. something in return. No, it's whatever I can contribute. And she's the same way. She makes 50 bucks and maybe on something and she'll give me 50 bucks. You'll give me all. Yeah, but that's how it is. If my partner makes more money than me, then that he feels good being like, no, I'm going to provide because I'm the one who's making the most. You get me? And whatever I make, for example, I take care of my expenses and I try to help as well in our expenses because at the end of the day, my expenses are his expenses. You get me? It's like we're one. (laughs) I I would never want (laughs) to obtain resources and then, like, be with my woman that I love and adore and not share that with her, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so the same way, if she was to come into something and make more and whatever, she'd want to share that with me. And I feel like that is so lost with a lot of people um, that, and I think social media has something to do with it as well, but it's like, dude, it's not a competition. It's not mm-hmm. like you do this and I do that. It's not like we both contribute, and your contribution is going to look different than my contribution. That, that's exactly why I said some things are you're contributing are not financial, but they're worth just as much as whatever oh, the amount they're giving. Perhaps even on. more, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that you say that because, um, like, w- with my relationship, it's very similar to, like, it's kind of our money. Like, w- we kind of put everything together. We try to make whatever payments when we buy stuff, food, water, all the other, mm-hmm. like, whatever we like to do is with travel, going out, whatever. We try to do it together. Um, my question was going to be to you in the sense, because you did say, um, oh, you know, I, maybe I don't contribute financially, but there's other things. And the reason why I want to touch up on that is because it's funny. When I come home from work, my girlfriend's a photographer. I think yeah, you met yeah. her once before. I follow her as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's a photographer, and she's doing great. She's growing, and I'm ex- extremely excited and very proud of her. Um, and 
Where was I going with this? Nothing. That, you know, a lot of times that she'll just be at home. Like, she's really not doing anything. She'll just be editing or maybe she's just following up with clients or mm-hmm. whatever. But when I get home from work, just her being there and being my peace <laughs> and making sure, like, you know, maybe she put things to start cooking and she just finished cleaning. Mm-hmm. Like, that to me is such a contribution. Yep. In our relationship, because I don't have to do anything now. I don't have to worry about the house. <laughs> yeah. um, if I could, obviously I would. Or if she needs my help with something, I'll do it. But it's like almost one less thing that I could just show up and just relax. Relax. Mm-hmm. And just and be with energy. my it's peace. Her energy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when you say that, because it's true, like this whole entire time, we're like, oh, financials, all this stuff. But it's like, man, her just being there is enough contribution sometimes. Yeah. And that's all that's that I beautiful. need from her. So then I kind of ask you, is there any expectation given that he's always traveling of what he needs from you because you're coming or is it almost like that freedom of, Hey, no, like I want you to come. Like this is our thing at this point. Um, I don't think he has expectations of me. I think I have expectations like of myself. Okay. You get me? Okay, like okay. I have had to find my own purpose in this traveling and living in that lifestyle. You get me? So I find my purpose, for example, that's why I started expanding in my own podcast because I was like, you know what? I'm traveling. Yeah. I'm meeting this. I'm, I'm growing and I have so much knowledge. What is something that I can do on the go, right? Because when I was modeling, like when I was here last time, I was like, okay, like that has kind of been on pause because I'm not in one place all the time. You get me? And I'm moving all the time. I don't really have the stability to grow modeling anymore in one place. So I've had to, and it's made me grow and to touch in other areas of my life, which I'm very happy that that's happened when, when this living his lifestyle of like, really fast and traveling because it's made me do things now that have nothing to do really with my image or my physical self right when it comes to my podcast my books um you really are just listening to my voice and my mind and my thoughts and my heart and my soul and no one even knows what i look like you get me and that feels more connected into who i am Mm -hmm. than modeling ever did Mm because modeling for me was more I loved it, but it was more ego-centric. It was more like, look at me, I look on the camera, and I'm yeah, hot, yeah, I'm yeah. beautiful. And I, I still love that. I still feed my ego when it comes to that. But I think my expectations when I was traveling was like, okay, I need to do something else that maybe has nothing to do with my image and it's actually closer to who I am as a person. Well, no, that's why you wrote the book. I remember when you, when the first time, well, the second time I think when you came on is yeah. when you wrote the book, and, mm-hmm. and that was the whole point of it. No, it was yeah. like to kind of get a different side where you can connect and really get behind what I'm looking at to see who's the person who really. Exactly. And what's going on in your mind. And I think that was a very like strong creative approach because it almost was like a starting point of you wanting to continue this whole content making to, to be more connected with people mm-hmm. instead of just the physical. So yeah. what have you learned along the process with kind of leaving modeling? Because you've done it for so long. Yeah. What have you learned now transitioning to this kind of online behind the camera um audio only i will tell you this i don't like to feel like i'm leaving anything behind you get me because i feel like if the opportunity presents itself i still love to do it and i'm gonna do it and people are gonna be like yeah but i thought you weren't modeling anymore you haven't done it for two years and it's like so what i never stopped being or never stopped loving what i do you get me so i think what i've learned throughout the process of those expectations is that for a long time, I was, like, doing housework, right? Like, housewife vibes. But I loved it. And my mom has always been, like, cooks and cleans, and she works. So I feel like living away, right, and on my own with my partner, he had no expectations of me, but it had to um, push me to step up to the plate and be like, what else do I bring to the table apart from being a beautiful girlfriend to just have around and being a fun time? Like, what mm. else? It makes you grow as a woman. I think that's what it made for me. I was like, when my boyfriend goes on tour, and I say I'm staying home, like, I'm cleaning the house, I'm doing the small things, I'm getting the kombucha he likes from when he gets home, I'm cooking, and that made me grow internally myself because I was like, actually, I can handle myself. Like, I can feed myself, yeah, I can yeah. clean, <laughs> I can maintain a household, and that is beautiful. Yeah, true. yeah that is beautiful to see yeah. because, at least for me, I've always <laughs> lived with my parents, sorry. And... My parents baby me. Like, yeah. I go grab anything. My mom's like, no, 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 yo te lo hago, yo te lo hago. So living away has <laughs> That's made so me true, grow too. up where I'm like, you know what, mom? I actually don't need you to do that much for me. I can actually <laughs> handle it myself. I know. That's I can true. fend for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's that's awesome. That's so, so a lot of learning has been yeah. happening, a lot of growing and yeah. developing. That's I like the behind the scenes, though. I'm not going to lie. When the behind the modeling and not posting so much or just not, how would I say, um... Just pushing my image so much of like, this is what I look like and this is what I can do. And sometimes it's been nice to just lay back and be like, okay, like, who am I with all this social media shit? Yeah. And it's been it's been so 
fulfilling because yeah. I feel like I have gone out and I've lived life as yeah. well. Yeah. And I've not been so worried about, oh, my God, I have to let everybody know. Yeah. You get me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember a, a while back that you had said that one of your biggest passions or the one of your kind of your goals uh, of, you know, as you getting older, what you wanted to do was to be a, a good mom. Like you wanted yeah. to be a good, a good woman, a good that wife, a, a good mom. Um, so it's kind of cool because I'm hearing you say this and it's almost like you're getting into those waters oh of what God. it's like to become <laughs> like, sound like my mom, oh, <laughs> right? Like a wife or like a mother. Cause like you're there, you're taking care of a house. You're taking care of another man. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, it's just funny. Cause again, the older I'm getting and it's like, you're out all day long, maybe working mm -hmm. and all you care about is coming home and it feeling like home. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's your. But that's job. no matter where you are in the world. Like yeah, no, exactly. I've gone through two beautiful places. But when I get home, either to Miami or now in Manchester, I'm like, I look at my bed. I'm like, there's no better place than this. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've cultivated that energy of mm -hmm. like nothing will compare to that. No matter where I am in the world. Sure, I can go out and have nice experiences and see beautiful places. But home is home. So then, let me ask you: Do, you, is there ever going to be um a time where it says okay? Am I going to continue traveling forever <laughs> with you? Have you had this conversation with him? Yeah. Or are we going to probably slow down and settle somewhere? Well, I think when it comes to slowing down, it's his work. I don't, I, I don't hope his work doesn't start slowing down. Yeah, we're going to really <laughs> but slow down. The but <laughs> I think we have had the conversation of, like, eventually we are going to have to pick at least one or two places to settle in. And I think when it comes to that, it was going to be Miami and it's going to be Manchester because that's where we're both from. Okay. So I, he's always going to have work in Manchester and I'm always going to want to come to Miami. Like, that's just the truth. I think for me, at least I want to settle in Miami and he does as well. But with his work being so hectic right now, it's like we don't have uh, like a definite structure, like plan. You get me? Yeah. We're kind of yeah. just seeing where his work goes, where mine goes and seeing where it's best to settle down. Because even though I love Miami, Miami's so expensive. Yeah, it's <laughs> but then again, it's a good market for him also. Like yeah. It's a good place to make money for him, you know, it, him being in that in that industry. Yeah. This would be a right place. Would you want uh, your kids to be born in the States or in Manchester? Of course, no. They need to be born here. American passport, baby, right. all the and way. And then you apply <laughs> for... <laughs> they can get the other passport later. Get British passport later, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Facts. laughs> yeah. Apply for that shit. <laughs> Is it easier that way? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, then you'll be a natural U.S. citizen. Of course, it's best. really hard to, like, for, for people from the U.K., it's really hard for them to get visas to travel in here. Very. Yeah, especially now since Brexit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely yeah. born here. Yeah, when, makes, I, when the time sense. comes of having kids. All right. But I do feel like when you were talking about um, how life prepares you in some way, makes you grow. Of course, I'm like, damn, if this is taking care of my boyfriend, imagine a little a little mini me and him. I'm like, yeah, it's tough work. I can't yeah. I can't imagine reality check. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the scary part of getting older. Because you were 25, probably like, oh, this is fun. And 26, it's like, all right, I'm growing up, getting older. I'm adulting. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm wifey as fuck. You yeah, know, cleaning, doing all this shit. <laughs> I never thought I was gonna do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, look at us. Yo, so and I'd like, be spot like my house will be spotless, and I'm like, yo, I'm the best at this. Yeah, like, look yeah, at this house. Yeah. It looks like a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> clean, clean. Um, that's awesome, man. I'm so happy for you where you are now in life, and it sounds like you're in a really good place, personally with your relationship. Um, obviously you have your you know your career. You have your things going on. You're an entrepreneur. You're a hustler. You have your own podcast now, from what I'm mm -hmm. from what I'm yes. uh, understanding. What is it about? Is it about a little bit of everything? Do you have like a kind of niche or what? Do you okay, mean? so I think since the first time I sat with you guys, I told you guys I'm like, yeah, one day I hope to have my own podcast. But I think life took me to this point right now because this is when I've been the most prepared to speak my mind, and I think this is when I have the most confidence for of my delivery of what I have to say. I think in the past I was a little more aggressive and maybe things my delivery came more from like pain and things that I've been through where now I think I have healed a lot, obviously not fully because we're never healed fully. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah, but I feel like now I have attained a delivery that I can empathize with my audience rather than tell my audience what to do or just like be judgmental about what I'm speaking on. You get me? So the podcast is called Tea with Tea because, you know, I drink a lot of tea. <laughs> and it's tea. also tea. tea. You, you got to spill, spill the tea. tea. <laughs> but I mainly, my main focus, and I think my main intention with this, is to grow a community of women, right? Because I think sometimes it's really hard to find good friends in this generation or find like-minded women who are on the path of healing and wanting to become family women and just become good people overall. I think our generation, you know, 
has the other side of like women and femininity empowerment that I don't really we'll click we'll in. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into it. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, so that's what my podcast is about. It's mainly focused to women. I'm not saying that a man can go and listen to an episode. It'll probably be relatable. But when I call you babe, then just know that it's because I'm thinking <laughs> that I'm speaking to girls. <laughs> Boss babe. Yeah, type <laughs> shit. Uh, how long have you, how many episodes are you in right now, if you don't mind me asking? Um, eight. Eight okay. episodes. Is it like a once a week, once a month? Yeah, so I was doing it weekly, right, when I started it, like I'll say like a, two months ago. But then for the past two weeks, since I went through the loss of my grandma, then I kind of took a little break sure, to recoup. Um, but I didn't want to put it off. You get me? Okay. It was. It's not something that I was like, okay, I'm going through this, and now I'm not going to care about anything. I think I was actually said, this is the time where I need to do this the most yeah. because this is what's going to get me out this rut. This is what's going to get me out this mentality that I felt like a victim. You get me? When you go through yeah. those things, you kind of question God, and you're like, well, God, why yeah. has this happened? Or like, I prayed so much. Like, how come <laughs> you didn't you didn't give me what I wanted? Mm -hmm. So the latest episode I released was removing your victimhood mindset because I was giving myself the pep talk. So I was like, well, I might as well record it and give it to somebody else that might benefit from from it too. I like that. I love it. You give a positive uh, energy into the world. Yeah, that's the main goal. Yeah. So let me ask you this because you know, speaking obviously, we're talking finances. You just mentioned the, you know the. In terms of like for women, like a lot of times th that traditional feminism and, and feminine energy and that being the caretaker and nurturing and stuff like that, I feel like you embody that in a very beautiful way. Yeah. Um, which uh, it's, it's tremendous, right? You know, it's it radiates and it's 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 very very admirable. But there's a lot of women who are out there who might say, well, you know what? Like, I don't want to, you know, I want to be with somebody or want to build a life with somebody, but I don't want to financially depend on them because I heard stories. What if they leave me? What if I'm left with nothing? How can a woman find, like, because I feel like naturally women, they, that's what they want to do. They want to take care of the home. They want to nurture. They want to, you know, build, uh, take care of the home, right? But it's like, uh, it's, 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 there's a, it's a risk for some, wo some woman. They feel like, well, if I'm, if I'm, there's no income for me. What if, what if he leaves me? What am I going to do now? Do you have some advice or how would you kind of uh, handle that? I think when you we mentioned the word traditional, yeah. everyone has a different picture in their head. Right? Yeah. Because you mentioned it right now, and I'm like, people are going to listen to this and be like, traditional, oh my God, long skirts, I don't mm. do anything, I must stay home with the kids, and I must have no life, and when my husband comes, he beats me, like, no, that's <laughs> not that's not it, girl. I think, for me, traditional, right, we all have feminine and masculine energy within us, and mm. I think traditional for me is learning when to use one and when to use the other, and how to let them coexist, yeah. right? So, for example, for me, even though I radiate a lot of femininity and I am very comfortable in my role as a woman, I can also use my masculine energy at any time if I want to. Mm -hmm. I use it in my work, for example, because masculine energy is your creativity. So, of course, when it comes to the ideas and the hustle mentality, well, I channel that masculine energy when it comes to my passion and the things that I'm doing. But I don't feel like in my relationship I have to use my masculine energy sure, because sure. that's what he's for. I'm, I'm comfortable being a woman in our relationship. So... Yeah, tell no, me. I, tell want me you tell to I was going to say, do you feel like you can be like that because he creates the environment for you yes. to be in your feminine? Yes. Or do you almost demand to be in your feminine so then he reciprocates with no. masculine? I don't demand anything. I am a woman. That is what I'm here to be. That's what God chose <laughs> me to be. And he has given me the space to be a woman. And I think that's what doesn't allow me to be as I said before, I was more aggressive and more like, Arr. like you get me? I was more in my masculine energy because I felt like I needed to defend myself against men and I needed to be careful with men. And it was my own mindset about masculine energy and mind that was keeping me in that constant pattern and cycle of dealing with men that kept me in my masculine energy. Mm -hmm. You get me? So let's say, for example, you're a woman. You were asking an example. And you're a woman and you want to attract a man who takes care of you. There's a lot of healing that you're going to need to do because you need also need to allow yourself to be taken care of, right? Okay. So when I first started dating my boyfriend, I was more in my masculine energy. And I think it created friction in the beginning because he was like, yo, like, I'm the man. Like, you need to pipe really? down. You get okay. me? Relax, slow down. Yeah, like, bit. relax, yeah. slow down. Like, you could be soft. Like, you can be vulnerable with me. You do not have to have this tough bitch act all the time. He, he literally told you that? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he told me once when we started getting to know each other, he's like, when you drop this act is when we're going to work out. But how did he know it was an act? 
because he probably saw the, through you. the person exactly the person was probably gonna see through you he saw that i was just like, having a hard exterior but inside i was like craving to be soft and to be a woman and i didn't actually want to be this boss babe yeah. you know what I mean? it's just, it wasn't really who i was it might be from other women but i don't think that's at the core who i am and he, so he told you that. Yeah. And so how did you respond? Because you could have chosen to stay in your mask and then be like, yo, don't tell me what the fuck <laughs> I need to do. So h- how did you respond? How did you accept? Well, I sometimes like you have to let people tell you off, bro, because sometimes they're right about you. And in that moment when he told me, like, when you drop this hardcore act, is when we're going to work out? I was like, damn. Something resonates. It is an act. Mm. Because at the end of the day, who like who am I? I was like, with my family, I'm not like that. I'm soft. I'm sweet. I'm this loving person. Why am I portraying to be this bad bitch who has no feelings that doesn't care about anybody? That's not the truth. I mm. care. I yeah. have feelings. I'm very emotional. I have a huge heart. <laughs> okay. I want the whole like dog, cat, kids, and a family. So why am I pretending that I don't need that? Mm. I do want that. Mm. So mm. I think a lot of people in our generation have this, I would say like this, cage around them right yeah and it's like this persona that they have built over time because they're getting influenced by our, our music by our role models that they're being influenced like oh you don't need anybody you don't need a man and you don't need this yeah the whole feminism and i'm not saying that every man is good you get me that's that's yeah. also not true but i think good men are out there and that if you open yourself up to like i do need and want a man then you could stumble into somebody that can actually provide for you and be good to you yeah because with um <laughs> it, it, yeah, that was a good example with extreme, I feel extreme feminism. It's just, it to me, it doesn't make sense. Because I got to be honest with you, man. I would love to be a stay-at-home dad and not do <laughs> shit, you know? I don't know why anyone would want to give up that shit, you know? Maybe times, you know, back then were a little bit different where it, it's almost like you were saying, like, you're home all day, your man's working, he comes home, he fucking whoops your ass. That's traditional, yeah, right? That's some people, that's their concept. I, I, I oh, agree. I, like it's that, unfortunate. Actually. Right, 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 right. So, but I, I feel like then the feminist movement just went too far to one side. And said, no, we can never allow <laughs> men to work and us not work. And it's like, hey, some I mean, if he can work and he can't support you, if he's a good man, why the fuck wouldn't you want to be at home? And I don't want to say submit, but be his his Robin. Like, be there. Mm-hmm. Like, help him. The, uh, clean the, the house. Or, or just do the things to make or him feel like he's coming home. Yeah, sometimes. Create I- that space. Excuse me. Even for him to come home and he needs business advice. Sometimes a good woman next to you. Won't make a difference in you making a good business decision and a shit, oh, a shit decision. Without because a doubt, every true. Our perspective as women or men are different, right? Yeah. So sometimes you guys are very stuck in your manly ways and how you see a situation, and you might come home and you're just venting to your girlfriend, and she might give you a perspective, and you're like, "This bitch is right," uh, you know? Like I should look at it that uh, way because uh, it's a more <laughs> feminine approach. It might be a softer approach. It might be an even how would I say? clearer approach because men sometimes are at least in my opinion like sometimes you guys are very like you, yeah like this you guys see it this this is what it is yeah. and i'm like no it can There's actually all be this. all these yeah. things exactly so i think apart from just like coming home and and coming home to a clean house and this and that there's also that side of like a woman can provide a lot of wisdom or perspective that a man naturally just won't have yeah i would love to say to anyone who's a stay-at-home mom that whatever you guys are very important um, I agree. Sometimes we fall into relationships and we do find ourselves with those that we kind of feel like, oh, man, I'm almost at the clutches that I have to ask for money to do stuff. It's a very shitty situation. However, there are great men out there. There are great women out there. Mm-hmm. They're not all bad. They're all not all trying to keep you caged and not you know, having to give you allowances. Some people, they just want someone to be there and to support while they're going out to work. And, and and again, it's the dynamics of the relationship. So similar to how you and your boyfriend have it, where, yeah, he's probably working the breadwinner, but when he gets home, he needs you. He, yeah. like, he needs you and he to be that there, balance yeah. for him. And I feel like that's the importance of any of you stay-at-home partners out there. Um, you do matter to their lives. It's sometimes it's a little bit difficult, but you know definitely check. Well, if you can go to therapy, that'd be the greatest thing. We <laughs> also have a, rela- a relationship with BetterHelp. Yeah, I'm throwing it wherever uh, I can. Yeah, BetterHelp. Uh, <laughs> www. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, www. Better slash the coffee breakup. 
Um, you get what fifty percent off of your first month? Is it? You get a nice. You get ten percent off. Ten percent. I'm gonna use it. Fifty percent. Damn. Ten percent off, which is still a pretty good percentage off. And the beauty is that you have um a therapist in the palm of your hand whenever it is that you go. Any advice? And if you don't like the first one, hey, the beauty is that you can continue shopping around until you find someone that makes sense. But that's kind of the importance of making sure that you find the right partner. And a lot of times, what we say in order to find the right partner, it's you have to become the right partner. And that's why I think that therapy is very important because it kind of allows you to really self-reflect, see who it is that you are, prepare yourself to be the best version of yourself to then attract the right individuals that should be in your yeah. life. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but but let me, because I, w- I want to also be pragmatic because the question when I have to ask you is like, let's say you do want to be that care, you want to stay home, but let's say uh, you, what a lot of women will say, well, what if we get, a, what, if, what if we separate? And I, now I don't have a career. Now I don't have any income what to do now that's a fear well, for so many so how can we address that problem well i'm gonna tell you the truth yeah. i don't think i'll ever just sit back and do nothing with my life okay that's just not me also i believe also maybe that when i have let's say i have three kids and i have no time to do anything but raise the kids then yeah i would i would think that it's scary to be like okay i'm solely relying on my partner to bring in the money yeah. and i actually let's say i have nothing to my name that is scary. I can see how for some women you say that. Like, it sounds scary to me. I'm like, Shit. yeah, why don't you get to work nothing. right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? Yeah. But I, I don't think I'll be that type of woman just because I have my own passions that and my own dreams For trying sure. to accomplish. I think when you were mentioning that, if my partner right now is the one who's on the go the whole time and working and hustling and bringing back the money, if I was doing the same thing that he was doing at the same level, I don't think we would probably work out, though. Because like if you were on the same kind of... Of hustle. Yeah, yeah, and Because yeah. there will be no balance between our relationship. At what point do we balance each other out if we're both on the hustle both, culture? Both on positive, and have both on negatives. Yeah. Gonna both out. at 100 miles an hour. It's like, oh, fuck, we're going to implode. It, together, exactly. You know? So I think, at least in my opinion, when it comes to women that are like, well, my husband does everything and I just stay at home nothing. If... I hope there's no divorces. I wish there wasn't. But I feel like if your partner appreciates the work that you do and vice versa... I can't see that going wrong. Let's, if my husband is the one going out and working, doing everything, and I'm staying at home raising the kids and doing nothing, but he appreciates what I'm doing, and I appreciate what he's doing, then where can we really go wrong? Because he's not going to come home expecting and be like, yo, you didn't do the dishes, this and that. He's going to be like, yo, my girl has been taking care of our kids, keeping this how to float. I'm so grateful for what you're doing. Yeah. And the wife is going to welcome her husband in saying like, oh my God, babe, I can't believe you've gone through so much for the past week. I'm here for you, whatever you need. I appreciate the work that you're putting in. Then it's like you're coexisting. But each is comfortable in their own role. She's yeah. not trying to be him and right, he's not right. trying to be her. Right. You have found a dynamic where they're both comfortable and they're happy to do what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, but you, you're bringing up like an ideal situation because a lot of couples, that's a perfect situation. Yeah. A lot of couples, <laughs> if a guy comes home, fucking house is a mess, there's no food, the guy's like, oh, <laughs> you, what the fuck you been doing all day, right? But she's been raising the kids, it's a full-time job, that's work. The woman, the guy comes home, the woman is like, oh, fuck, like, take care of the kids. The guy's like, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to, you know, I need a break. Mm-hmm. So, you brought up the perfect example of that's what, you know, parents and, 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 and husband and wife should should be if they if they have the dynamic. But in yeah, reality, but a lot of yeah, times that does not really happen. But you know? this is what I'm saying. Both roles need to be comfortable stepping into each other's role. Yeah. You get me? Like, as the provider, let's say it's the man or the woman, you need to be comfortable that when you're needed to be the caretaker, you need to step up to the plate. And yeah. I actually don't believe in that whole thing of, like, the husband goes to work and she, he doesn't raise the kids, so then you miss out on, on the whole I growing agree. up of your kids. There yeah. needs to be a balance in every relationship. Just yeah. because you come home tired doesn't mean that I have to take care of the kids the whole time. Like It's not fair. If I need you to step up to the plate and step into my role, then that's fine. If you go broke tomorrow and you tell me, babe, you need to get a job ASAP because we can't pay this house, then I need to be like, you know what? I can step up to the role of being a provider as well. I love that. So I'm yeah. s- that's what I'm saying. The masculine and the, ener- and the feminine energy are both within you. You need to be know when to use yeah, yeah. each one. For sure. 100%. You get what I'm saying? 100%. So uh, that's why I don't believe in having such a structured plan or yeah. only you could do this, the man can only do this, the woman can only do that. Because at some point in life, life is going to test you for you guys to switch mm, roles. Yeah. And you need to know that you're like, yeah, I would do that. 100%. I'm willing to do so. 100%. I think it's very important, especially because and and for me it's like i need to be with a partner that is cuz you know like in, in the in, in the big picture is you're going to go through ups and downs there's going to be moments where you get sick you might lose your job mm-hmm. you you might lose a family member mm-hmm. is this person that you're with going to be by your side through thick and thin and if the answer is no 
then what are you really doing? If this person would leave you if you didn't have any money, right? Then why are you with this person to begin with? True. Is this person like because there's this you're gonna spend the rest of your life with this person? Hopefully, there's gonna be some turmoil. There's gonna be some ups and downs. There's gonna be some devastation. And if you're just with somebody because they provide an amazing lifestyle for you, what if that lifestyle no longer Changes. is is there? Mm-hmm. Then are you just gonna abandon and, and ship and leave? Well, then that's not a relationship that I want to be in. Exactly. And vice versa, you know, like if I'm having kids. As a man, I want to be there and raise my kids too. I don't just want to fucking see them on the weekends, you know? Like, that's yeah. f- for that. Why am I having kids? Exactly. So, yeah, I love that. Well, I'll give you a good example. For example, um, last week when I sadly lost my grandmother, which I, li- I live with her in Miami, which has been a, like the greatest loss that I've, the biggest loss that I've ever encountered, mm-hmm. right? I was away when it happened. And my world came like, crumbling down and i was like oh my god i am far away from home and i've lost like such a big part of my life right now right and simultaneously my partner was preparing for a 6k capacity festival that he's in charge of and this is one of the highest peaks of his career and of his life while i suddenly got hit and i was at the lowest point of my life because i've never lost a close family member before so this was the one time that I was like in excruciating pain and it was like emotional and physical at that point. And he is like sharing that pain with me. Mm. But we both like I had to be there for my family and he also need to be there for his his career yeah. and dreams. So he was trying to be there for me and and he was right and share the pain with me while at the same time keeping his energy high for what he's doing. And I am in pain, suffering because I've lost a loved one. But I'm still his girlfriend and I have to support his career and what he's doing right now. So I can't all be like, well, I'm in my pain and I can't support you because of that. You, I kind of, we looked at each other and went, this is like one of those moments in your relationship where like, I'm at a low, low, low and you're at a high, high, high. And how are we going to manage this? Yeah. So I think there's, there's those points in the relationship where you're like, are we going to stick through this? Because another man could have been like, well, you know what? I'm going to live it up. It, this is my festival. I don't care that you're going through this. I'm focused on me. And I could have easily been like, well, I don't care about anything that you're going through either. I'm going to dip on you and just focus on my family. I had to remain a balance where I had already booked my flight home on that Monday. And my grandma passed on a Tuesday. And I said to myself, I was okay. I can run home right now, right? Which I'm not in, in a condition to because I am very sad. I am very erratic. Like I can't really take a 12 12- <coughs> our flight back home and then i or i told myself i was like or i can take the next days to recenter myself to regroup to be there for my family as much as i can be right now from a distance right. and still support my boyfriend when he does his festival and then come home and handle everything that i need to handle mm. that was my best way to deal with the situation at hand and i think i felt like i did the right choice because at the end of the day i needed those five those four days before i came home to be there for my family now because it gave me that time alone to process my emotions and be there for my mom because it's her mom that we lost. So now when I came home, I had already processed all my emotions to a point where I can be a support system for my mom. Mm. So, um, I wanted to cover the coffee breakup, starting from within book, the secret to a healthy relationship, page 22. Um, we talk about the most important principles of, a, of building a healthy relationship. Okay. Key principle number two, effort. Effort in a relationship means paying attention to your partner's needs. It is about being present in the relationship and doing your best to keep the relationship going. What you and your partner did was effort. Yeah. You yeah. guys were there for each other, tried no matter what. Even yeah. though you were going through something, he said, mm-hmm. okay, I'm in the brink of something huge in my career, yeah. but she needs me. Mm-hmm. And he was there. The same way, when he, on the back of his mind, probably, he goes, damn, I still got to worry about this, but my girl, I know she's going through something. Mm-hmm. And you're there like, yo. Do what you need to you do. You need you need you. I'm here for you. Thank you. We'll handle this. But you got something big going on. You both contributed. You both were there for each other. And just like you said, any other man probably could have been like, fuck that. I got shit to do. And mm-hmm. you could have been like, yo, fuck you. I got to do my own stuff. You guys were both there. You guys kept the relationship afloat and alive. And you guys were still attentive to both of your needs, mm-hmm. which is the whole point of having effort in the relationship. I Buy love Buy a that. copy now, thecoffeebreakup.com, starting from within the secret to a healthy relationship. I'm taking that copy home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's yours. It's actually, yours. Actually I that. love that. That's beautiful. It's, it's yours. Uh, man, I love that. And, and, and you're a, a prime example of what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like. And um, 
and you you know you go through life through things in life and if hopefully you ch- you'll pick up the right partner who you know is going to be there by your side but if you if you if you're with somebody who who's not there to support you raise children or when you get sick or when you lose your finances or whatever it's like then you're with the wrong person right yeah. you know because you have to know that who you're with can you trust this person to be by your side and if the answer is no what are you doing if you only want me at my best you don't deserve me oh yeah cuz i'm not always at my best and th- th- that was like one of the examples. There's other times where I don't have to lose a, a, like a loved one to be at my worst. Sometimes it's yeah. personal things, like internal battles that we fight against ourselves. That sometimes having that good partner makes that difference because I've been in mental ruts or just like really low in my life where he's reminding me, like, hey, like, look, he's ten years into his career, right, into his DJing, and I am probably about three years into really like what I'm doing, which is helping people. And that's when I started my book, which was two years ago. That's when I, I stopped doing the modeling. I was like, okay, what do I actually want to do like community wise? So I can't really compare 10 years that he's doing to three of mine. I'm in the beginning of my career. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I'm not making as much money. Maybe I don't have as many opportunities coming up, but witnessing his, right, his process and his creative process and journey has given me that push sometimes when I'm feeling low that he's like, look, This is part of it. You're in your three. I'm in your 10. You're going to have 10 more obstacles like this. You just got to keep through. You got to keep believing in yourself. Like just because you failed that this does not mean that you're going to fail the next thing. Like keep pushing. And that's also important in a relationship because you're not feeling good most of the time. Sometimes you lose inspiration. Sometimes you forget your worth. And it's good to have somebody who reminds you of your worth. You know what I love about you? Um, I think you were, well, like you're una guana. (laughs) <laughs> so the way that you are, we, we're just raised very different because the way that I, it's like you want to be the woman in a relationship. You want to be, you know, stay at home. You want to take care of, of, of children, take care of your man. Like th- you want to be a mother and a wife. Mm-hmm. Um, But you also don't only want that in the sense of you don't need more, but say that something happens to your man, he's in a rut. And he ca- he's not making money. You're not the person to say, yo, I'm out. <laughs> and if you can't mm-hmm. hook it up, you're the person that's going to be like, all right, let me see what I can do. Yeah, of let course. Let me see what I can contribute. Wh- 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 let's get through this. Like, wh- what the fuck are we going to do then? Mm-hmm. Like, let me, let me look. Let me hustle. And I think that that's what I love about you. And I think that I wish more women had that level of patience. Where it's like patience and also grit. Where when the going get tough, bitch, we're in this together. Yeah. You know, we're ride or die. And I don't know, I feel like sometimes, especially in this generation, where if a man is the one who's working, because then that's the other side of it, too, where if they are working and because you we were talking about earlier, you were saying it where it's like, oh, you know, we, we split up and now the partner doesn't have anyone. You know, she hasn't been working. What is she going to do? Well, it's like, what if the guy goes through something and then you're there with your family, with the mother of your children? And then she looks at you like, well, how are you going to support us? Well, if you can, I'm going to. Bounce, yeah, yeah. It's it's a very scary moment, and I don't think we really talk too much about. We never talk about it, but it's like that's the thing. It's like, do you do you as a man, if the person, if the woman you're with, let's say she's at home, and you you're like, oh yeah, I'm the provider. Well, what if you won't one day you're not right for whatever reason? Is she still gonna be by your side? What if you get sick? Because illness right, comes right, in oh, anybody. Yeah. What if example. you get sick and you're like, I can't work anymore? Perfect example. Well, I feel like a real woman, right? And I, I hate to say those things. So sometimes people are like, what a real woman is, whatever. What is a woman? To me, yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> well, that's for another episode. <laughs> that does bug Don't Anyways. put me in that episode. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. I feel like a good woman will be like, like, I told you, from the caretaker now she needs to step into like, okay, I might need to be a caretaker uh, and a provider. Well, you got to step in. You got to step yeah. in. I have no problem dipping in and out of being a provider and being the caretaker. Like I told you, you provide things that are not financial things. Yeah. So I think... What differentiates a lot of women is that some women are not willing to, and I respect mm. that. If they're not willing to be a provide uh, to be a provider, then that is also you gotta find your match. Because some women are out there, they're like, I don't want to work, I don't want anything, mm-hmm. I want to be a stay at home mom, or I want to be babied and and be paid everything for, and I don't care to do anything else. I respect that. If that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. It doesn't make you any less of a woman, but then find a partner who's comfortable with that. Because yeah. don't go to a guy who, let's say, he wants, like, a 50-50 relationship, and then you're demanding of him to be 100 and, and zero. Because yeah, then yeah, you're yeah. going to be in an unhappy-ass relationship. Yeah, but then, but then let's think about it. Like, okay, like, you, you say you respect that, but, like, if that's what you, if as a woman, that's what you want, 
then the guy has to know, like, yeah, she's with me because of the lifestyle I can provide. If I don't, for whatever reason, she's going to fucking an, bounce. Yeah. And I mean, I guess there's some guys who are willing to take that risk. Where but isn't okay that life that. in itself? Like, for example, I have expectations like that that are like, I expect care, attention, respect, honestly, loyalty. If you can't provide that, I'm out as well. So for me, it's not the financial that can um, make me leave the door. But if you don't provide the things that I just said to me, like loyalty, love, care, attention, then I'm also out the door. Right, but those are attached yeah. to a human being as a per. That's the character. That's who this person is. And one is the who they are, and the other thing is what they do for a living. Uh, I feel I like that. that's a little bit different, right? Because ideally, the character is not going to change. I could lose my job, but I'm still kind. I'm still paying you attention. I'm still loving. I'm still devotional. Uh, you know, but if I lose my job, then the money's going to stop coming in. So I think well, one no. is, is... Yeah, but some women are also okay with... If the man is providing everything financially, then they can cheat and go out and do whatever they want. And they're like, I don't care. I'm, I'm chilling because uh, he's providing. They're yeah, all yeah. agreements yeah. like that, too. That they're like, yo, as long as I got a roof over my yeah. head, you're buying me so bags every week. Yeah. It's so complex. CJ, CJ uh, Sparks. She oh, was we like, did oh, have yeah. CJ We had a, a guest on. She was like, yeah, like... You know, my man, as long as he pay, he, she's like, oh, all men cheat, so at least get yourself a rich guy. That's what yeah, that was. Yeah, rather her, cry in a Lamborghini. That was her motto. Yeah, so, yeah. Which mm. I guess that, that yeah, you're like, oh, mm. I don't and know. Then I just don't think that works for minimum me. Minimum salary requirement for a man, what was that? Two million dollars? Two million dollars. Like, oh, it's not that much. <laughs> and it's like, how much do you make? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Dude, so wait, because you had sent us a video <laughs> earlier today of, of the um, marry for money or marry for love or don't marry for love, marry for money. Remember the video that you had sent yeah, us? Yeah, th I sent it to you. Uh, well, I sent it to both of you guys. Yeah, did you Where see it? You sent it to both of us. Was it the girl speaking? Yeah. yeah. yeah the girl yeah. speaking and then after she was talking about, um, I guess, the whole story of like oh, the Kiki Palmer situation is what she had brought yeah, up. Because, yeah, because, okay, so let me ask you that because of that, it's like, you can be with a guy who's financially secure and you have your roles and, you know, you, you, you both responsibilities are very important. But then it's like, do you feel like with him making the money, are there certain things like, I feel like you, are you like, if you don't do certain things, can they hold that against you? Like, well, I'm making the money. There's a lot of guys who are like feel that way. Or a lot of women are like, oh, like, shit, if he makes all the money, I can't really have any say in anything. No, because why is money the main, the main thing that we're looking at? Well, like, why is you making the money give you the right to disrespect me? That makes no sense to me. Well, well, well I guess the video that, that she was covering is kind of like, well, when Kiki Palmer's, you know, boyfriend, man, whatever it was, with baby partner. daddy, whatever. <laughs> partner. What, what partner, whatever you want to call. Um, whenever he stepped out of line, yeah. where, because she's the breadwinner, she's the one that, you know, she's making mm -hmm. all the money, whatever, and he goes, yo, I don't want you wearing that. Everyone was like, yo, fuck this guy. Who the hey fuck the is he? He ain't it's making a, no yeah. money. She's the, whose name His is on that employee. deed? That's what I was saying. Hey, so then she's like, I, so then what about the situation where, you know, most women are in that, si like, yeah. kind of not so much living, but they're the employee in that situation. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so now you're demanding things and you expect it to be done. But when he's requesting something or kind of stating his point, he gets crucified yeah, for but it. So he, like, you know where his mistake was, like? Why are you having this this discussion on social media? Why, if we it's sure. your girl, why that. why is this not being handled behind the scenes? We, That's the first thing yeah, for me. Like I, I agree. you're making, I agree. You're making agree. your business everybody's business, so everyone's entitled to say whatever the f they want. 100 you get me because you put your business out there. So now don't cry that people are commenting and giving and calling you her employee because you've just made a public accusation or a public comment, right? So I think that was where he went wrong. Sure. I don't think he's wrong for feeling the way he's feeling. I'm gonna tell you the truth. If my man, that's like right, my provider, had a video like that and another woman's grabbing him and dancing upon him like that, I would break up with him. I'll be like, this is done. You've disrespected me. I don't I don't even care how much money you bring to the table. F you. You could take all your money. <laughs> go back to the UK. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, staying my ass. You get me? Like, <laughs> yo, dead ass. So I think for me, like, when I saw that video, I understand that our generation will be like, oh, women power is not even a big deal. It's Usher. Like, a lot of people are like, but it's Usher. And I'm Celebrity. like, I don't care who it is. It could be Lolita de la Esquina. Like, yeah. no one's touching my man like that. Right. And I also responded to you guys as like, I think it was like a yeah, q and Yeah, I was going to bring that oh. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I was like, I don't think it's what she's wearing that's the problem. Because at the end of the day, I could be wearing that and still act respectful to my partner. I think her outfit was a way of his... Him, him releasing like what he actually felt about just the whole situation. It wasn't the yeah. outfit that was the problem. There's Usher grabbing her by the waist and she's like, uh, that's what I, I, I said that. That's, like, what that's I said. the issue. That was my thing. I'm like, dude, 
there's no way it's by the outfit. It's it's her. I mean, yeah, she was cheeked up. You know, she was really <laughs> looking good. <laughs> but you see her there dancing. You got Usher grabbing her, and then like the spotlight is now on her. You yeah. know, and then I see him from at home probably looking at that like. I probably look so stupid. stupid right? Yeah, my boys are making fun of me. I'm yeah, like, I'm yeah. getting fucking roasted, roasted in on the, the group <laughs> chat. <laughs> right? I gotta say something. Oh exactly. So I feel like you know that's that was kind of the approach. But d- do you think that outfit is appropriate if the man isn't there? Because I feel like that's a little much. I, I was gonna ask that. Good job. Okay. Come on. I it. think I can. Okay, if I'm comfortable wearing it, then I'm comfortable wearing it. If my partner says that he's not comfortable with me wearing something that we're gonna have to negotiate you get me really? did you meet me already dressing up this way now you want me to change because that's also not fair to me you met me this way i've always dressed this way now you're expecting me to change myself for you but if i'm not comfortable with that then you're gonna have that moment in the relationship where like well i want you to not stop wearing that you're gonna be like you met me wearing this though so fair fair argument fair yeah, argument fair, but fair. i do have a rebuttal um Tell me. say that uh he he then tells you listen i understand Okay, and that's why I was attractive to you. Clearly, I was looking at you double cheeked up on a Tuesday, but I I know that if it caught my attention when you were single, I know it's it's grabbing everyone else's attention as well. And I trust you, but I don't trust uh, every man because if I was able to approach you dressed like that, who's to stop another man dressed like that now that you're in a relationship? If anything, it's not that I don't want you to wear that because I don't want to show off your body. But if you're in a relationship, think of the position that you're putting me in wearing something like that where you're creating an environment where now men are going to be more attracted and more daring to see you that way when you can just wear something else. I'm not telling you to cover up completely, but isn't there something else that maybe you can wear instead? For your man, you're going to tell me you wouldn't do that? It's not that I wouldn't, right? But I feel like if I got dressed and I feel good and then own up to it. Like, that. this is what I want to wear. I, it's not that I'm doing it to disrespect you. And the fact that you're thinking how men are going to perceive me tells me the wrong thing. Like, why are you worried about how people are going to perceive me? Like, this is you and I. You should feel comfortable. Like, my girlfriend feels beautiful in that. I can. I have hands. I can throw hands if somebody's disrespectful to her. That's it. Like, it's just, I think you have to be secure, and it has to work for you. I don't think her outfit was the think? problem. I loved her outfit. How, <laughs> what about if the video was different? What if she, for no, example, would have... Got her like her like whatever he serenaded her right, but she would have acted like maybe not so touchy and just been respectful. Her outfit would have not been mentioned because people wear that all the time. I it's funny you say that because (laughs) people wear that that all the time in Miami. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) so we're a little skewed on the view there. True. Um, but I did say that too because if she would have just been like, hey, like from afar, maybe sitting like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one would have seen her, you know, her, her butt in the video. No one would have been like, yo, like you're with a man, the baby, you just had a baby, whatever. I feel like people would have, you know, it wouldn't have gotten that much attention, I think. I think if her man wouldn't have made the comment, it would have gotten <laughs> no attention at all. I, I, I mean, is it... Are you watching the video? I'm looking at the picture. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. You, I rem- see you remember? Let it, let it, uh, I need to see it again. Eric, that, bro, yeah. I need it up. Uh, refreshing. Yeah, let's let's yeah, let's yeah, freshen up with the audience too. If we'll you guys are on we'll Spotify or Honestly, iTunes, <laughs> you de- men, especially men, if we got you, you guys want to check in really quick on this timestamp. We got the goods on the. I mean, but you can Google it too, but I mean, I get it. It's a risky outfit, and I guess everybody in Miami wears something like that. It's, it's not a, a big risky, deal. but you can admit it's risky. I, I feel like yeah, this it's is risky, I'm but yeah, no, go ahead. Go but this it. is what I said. <laughs> like, if her man wouldn't have made this comment, would it have anything been at all? No one would have talked about Kiki Palmer. No, I think people still would have talked about it. The yeah, way the way that w- she was dancing, Usher. the outfit, Usher, even m- maybe not to that ex- that extent, but I think it would have still caught. Yeah, I don't think it would have gotten the attention of oh he's out of line, but I feel like it would have been like yo you see Kiki Palmer with Usher double cheeked up there and he's singing to yeah. her. I think it would have still because gotten some sort because of also like think about the the event where they are because this is, seems more like a like a beach club or something type of outfit like it's she like, looks like a bottle girl. Yeah, but like it's like, I, I don't hey, know. Hey, I was a bottle girl. Were you yeah. not wearing Respect that? Respect bottle girl. I'm also. not saying anything <laughs> wrong. Yeah. That seems like what they, you work at, r- at a restaurant when you're leaving the Fontainebleau. I see people yeah. coming into yeah, the, the, the live. Yeah, yeah. What are they wearing? No, that's the type that's of outfit. Kiki Palmer. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yes. Maybe she wears that too. <laughs> <laughs> but but is there so is there a thing as showing too much if you're in a relationship? And it's like, if so, no, 
I do think that. You do think that. Okay, yeah. so w- do you have an example? Like, what would be too much? Because you clearly don't think that's inappropriate. Yeah, uh, if you don't think that's... <laughs> I got to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm here know. for the girls. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, in my opinion, if, if your man is comfortable and you want to show everything, that's on you. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I know my limit of what to wear, but not because of my partner. It's because, because of, of me. Yeah, you get yeah, me? Yeah. And I went through a transition of, like, I used to be very comfortable wearing really showy things or posting on Instagram very showy or, like, semi-nude, where I've transitioned now to, like, I'm not comfortable with why? that anymore. Yeah. Why? Why? Why did I transition into why that? Why do you feel, why do you not Because do that I feel like. You don't think there's a slight influence that you're in a relationship right now and you're like, you know what, I don't want to create this much attention. No, I because I feel like I stopped a little bit before my relationship because I kind of was like, okay, like, I think I just became more modest overall. Like, little by, obviously, when I got into a relationship, I became more modest, but again, it was a personal journey. My boyfriend has never in my life been like, you can't wear that. Ever. Ever, ever. Maybe I've never picked a risky outfit enough for him to be like, yo, what are you doing? You need to ask him. I need you, can you do me a favor? You got, I need you to text him that picture and be like, what? What do you think about Oh, it? my God. Where's that going? It's outside. Ah, I was so no would do it. He'll probably say no, though. He'll probably Send be like, it. you're definitely not going to wear I'm bringing it. your, I'm bringing your yeah. bag. <laughs> you, think, you think he'll say, oh, this is a little I'm too bring much? Your ba- I'm bringing the bag. Yeah, we'll cut bring it, it Bring it, bring I'll, it, I'll text it to her. See, to be honest, let's guess what do you think I think he's going to say. I think he's going to say, I think he might say no. He might be like, you think only his, You think his response may be... Uh, Altered because he knows you're on a podcast? Or you no, think be no, no, Or do you think that maybe because he's in the industry, he's seen some skimpy ass yeah. shit, and he's like, oh, that's a lot of clothes. He's sensitized. <laughs> nah, yeah, nah, nah, nah. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's not. He said, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you send it? A, a With a mad it? ass face. He said. <laughs> you see? Yes, yes, yes. So, now, would you still wear it, knowing that he doesn't find it appropriate? I don't think I would wear that even if I wasn't ah, with him, though. Shut you get me? Shut no, but I'm serious. Up. This is not an outfit that I would be like, yeah, I'm going to wear this. I would not wear that. Okay. I've worn that in the past. <laughs> 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 I've worn worse. I Honestly, that's what I'm saying. Like, I had a point where I d- really didn't care about how much I showed off my body. And it doesn't mean that I was more comfortable then and less comfortable now. Right? It's just this is the way that I choose to carry myself now versus the way that I chose to carry myself then. And I actually do think that from a business perspective, right? I felt like if I'm going to be taking more serious this way, so I want to make that change. And it, and it's, it's been like a cause and effect thing. Like I've changed things and different opportunities have came up to the plate. I'll give you like this podcast, for example, right? People want to come and I want people to think of my opinion as a valuable opinion. I want women to look up to me. I want to inspire younger girls. And how can I do that if on the other side, on the other face of the coin, I am absolutely... Um, putting myself out there in a way that just shows no dignity or shows no uh, self-respect. Then yeah. it's like, how can I take what you're saying serious if I could simply go on your Instagram and I can see s- things that I'm not meant to be yeah, seeing? Yeah, you're not walking the walk. You're not living your true values. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but some future. women, for example, that we see all the time, they feel empowered by showing a lot and they yeah. want to inspire women to show a lot and just be free, quote-unquote yeah. free, and show their goods and that it doesn't matter if you do. Mm. If that's what you want to inspire women to do, that is what you think you should be doing. I feel like I should be take out this mission and push women to this side. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like there's a healthy way for men to express, like, hey, I'm not really comfortable with this? And I get it. Like, if I met you in a certain way, then obviously if I date you or pursue you, then I have to be okay with, with that. Mm-hmm. But let's say it's something that's a little bit more subtle. Where Yeah, we met. We started dating. You, you weren't really dressing too provocative right like it was you know within reasons depending on where you live whatever miami yeah you're miami yeah, yeah okay. sure you know it's a little extra yeah, but yeah. yeah. there's a reason yeah. and then it, it, it's within limits and let's say you you become more serious you become exclusive whatever and all of a sudden or here and there she wears outfits that are very maybe too uncomfortable for you where it's like mm-hmm. i know this is your thing you're comfortable but i'm not and i know it has nothing to do with you it's all with with, with myself can a man express that insecurity and how if so you but know. isn't it insecurity it might just be like a boundary that he wants to okay. set okay well you let's talk me? about that you, and it doesn't have to be about what you wear like women can share comfortably as well if they have something that they're not comfortable with when i started my relationship i was like you're a very friendly person you're a nice guy and i appreciate that you have a lot of girlfriends guy friends everybody knows you i was like i'm not comfortable with you being that friendly that's all 
right? That was me, not because I'm insecure. That's just what I'm not comfortable with. I'm not comfortable with girls being too touchy-touchy, like huggy-huggy, that friendly of like, oh, yeah, that's not my homegirl. Like, I think I am comfortable in a relationship when there's boundaries set in your girlfriend's friendships, right? Okay. If it comes to a man, right, you said the example of him telling her, like, I know I met you this way and you should dress this way, but now that we're more serious, I really don't feel comfortable with what you wear. I think it's up to the woman to be like, well, either I take my partner's feelings into consideration or yo vas a ir haciendo lo que me dé la gana and, and I don't care about how you feel, which shows you that you maybe you shouldn't be in a relationship because there's going to be many times in a relationship where you're going to have to compromise. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Like not wear a certain outfit that he might not like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you might just be like, you know what, babe, okay, I won't wear it out to the club, but maybe if we just do dinner. Like, do you mind if I just okay. do this to dinner? Well, together, you know I mean? Okay. It's, which is compromise. It doesn't mean that I'm never right. going to wear this dress again. It might just be that maybe at the club is not the right place because we understand that the demographics at the club, the guy might grab you. You know, people can get disrespectful. Sure. That's definitely that, And fact. I think that's the point. So then he's, in his mind, it could be like, dude, if I'm not there and that's the kind of environment that you're going to be at where monsters like that live <laughs> do you really want to go wearing that <laughs> but but you could be fully clothed and these monsters are gonna come of course yeah. and and i don't want to yeah, kind of be like too. oh you know you dress like that you're more you know uh kind of a bigger target for the word i'm not i'm not gonna say the word that's not allowed to be said but it's almost like guys are very visual people no and bro and we when go you to start the gas drinking station and, looking and, like whatever, and guys are still gonna hit on you I've gone to the gas station looking crazy, like in chancletas, look, and and there's still that old man that's like, "Oh yeah, mommy." We need to and do. Like, we need to conduct an experiment with you. <laughs> well, we're gonna have you wear two different outfits. We're gonna walk you down, fuck it, I don't know, a busy street, 49th Street. Not 49th Street. <laughs> no, it's got to be somewhere where... It's got to okay. be like South Beach, maybe. Ocean Drive. <laughs> Ocean Drive. No, there's a street that I have in mind that there's always like these people that stand on the corner. Oh, I think they're selling <laughs> drugs. Drug I think so, but there's like a bunch of them. And like they're always there. And whenever a chick walks by, they're like, hey, hey, where you going? Hey, yeah. where you going? So I'm thinking we got to have you go down like wearing um a very skimpy little bikini. Maybe, you know, we'll have your man on the other side so, you know, he can be there <laughs> as a bodyguard. But then another one wearing like a fucking parka or like a suit and then walk by and then we'll see if you get the same attention on both sides. Oh, we have to run yeah. an experiment. But it wouldn't be the same. That's what that exactly my, f and that's my point. I yeah. don't think it will be the same. I get know, that. Oh, but, there, there, but people will look, yeah, but it's, you can have less people look or you can have a whole bunch of people look. That's exactly that's the conversation. I get that. Right. But I feel like Sometimes people looking is not a negative thing. There's been times where I dress up very nice and I go to places and I do feel people staring at me. And it's, I'm like, I'm just showing a cleavage. Like, why is this being seen as I'm just like half naked? And it's really not. We're not going to win this battle. <laughs> she's not going to let us win. We're, We're going to win this one, girl. She's going to find any way. She could be wrong and somehow she'll be, she will be right <laughs> at the end. But it's like, I guess. <laughs> you know really what? Though. To each his own. I, I feel like if my man at the end of the day, like if I got dressed like that and he said, babe, I'm, we're going to his, his job. Let's say to DJ. He's okay. like, babe, I'm not comfortable with you wearing that. Then to me, it's not like a battle of like, I need to win this. I need to lose this. Like, <laughs> yeah, if true, it's not true, that much true. of a big deal, I'm like, okay, I'm still going to look hot in whatever right, I wear. Right, so mm, right. You get me. So I don't think sometimes in a relationship, it's not that the win or lose. Like there's no win or lose. At the end of the day, we're arguing. We're both losing right now because we're arguing. You get me? It so it's true. about getting to like the solution rather than like getting stuck in like you're right and I'm wrong. I like that. And also sometimes like just picking your battles. Like is this really something that to, to get worked up over? Like maybe you're not comfortable wearing me wearing this, but there's something else that I could be wearing or, yeah. or you know, whatever. Or like you said earlier, we'll wear it when we go somewhere together, you know, and that's yeah. it. We move on. And compromise. Exactly. Compromise. I think like, for example, for me, when I said that I was not comfortable with like too much friendliness and, you know, because that can get misinterpreted. And I was like, you can still, I love you the way you are. I'm not saying that you need to change the way you are. I, I'm just telling you to be aware of that, how that can be perceived the wrong way and how you're going to have to open your eyes on how these girls could be taking your friendliness. In a friendly matter. It's like, hey, yeah, you can, you can, you can smile. You can oh, smile to say hi. The gun, gun. <laughs> yeah, the gun. Yeah, you can smile. Sorry, I didn't mean to like poke you. <laughs> yeah, you were tickling me. Like, was he playing with me? Right <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, you can be friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> say hi. Just say hi. It's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> Blow him away. Um, no, I love that. I mean, again, listen, it's okay to have healthy boundaries, but it's but you have to express them in a manner that it's it's respectful of. You yourself and also the, the other person. Um, I think a lot of people misconstrue like insecurities versus you know boundaries as well. Yeah. You know, it's like they're not all necessarily the same. And as long as you have those healthy boundaries and you express them in a manner that isn't, you know, uh, tearing the other person down, I think it's 
listen, everybody has their own kind of beliefs and, and sets of how they want to operate a relationship. Yeah. I think if my man didn't care about what I wore, I will also be worried. Because why don't you care? Do you well, not you care those, at all? You're one of those. Well, yeah, maybe a little you're bit, a little toxic. Those. I'm just kidding. It's not <laughs> that. It's that. It's not that I want you to be. Like, I you like can't a wear little that. bit of jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> but you said I don't think it's jealousy, but I think like when you love somebody, you're protective over them. So I, if I wore something and my man think that that could put me in danger or be perceived, if he didn't care at all, I was like, bueno, que salga para la calle, they can grab her ass. I don't care. Right. That would worry me because I'd be like, why don't you care? You right. get me? But right. it's not that I'll be testing him to do that. I'm okay. just saying like. If I were to do it and it bothered him and he didn't say anything, that would worry me. Do you ever mm-hmm. think that you probably look at an outfit and you're like, I know my man's not going to like it if I wear this, but I'm going to wear it anyway, dude. <laughs> well, look, I have worn things that are like lace, right? And okay. I've not worn a bra under, so you can like, you have to like zoom in with like a freaking telescope to see my nipple. And he's been like, I'm not comfortable with you, you wearing that because I can see your nipples. And I have had to be like, okay, then I'm going to get nipple stickers or I'll wear a bra under it. And it's not that I'm doing it for him. It's that if that's not what you're comfortable with, I'm going to be hanging around your friends. If you don't feel comfortable with me going around your mm, friends with my true. nipples out, the then I have to I respect mean, that. Yeah, I, I have to hope. respect that. I mean, I th- hope not. Nipples out in front of my boys. Exactly. Oh. I would feel uncomfortable yeah. <laughs> if I show up and your girl's there <laughs> where yeah. I'm like, What's going on here? <laughs> Should I come back? But well, that's time? what I'm saying. Like, there has been situations of, like, not that you can't wear that. It's like, I'm not comfortable with you showing your nipples. To me, before I started dating him, it wasn't a big deal. I was like, Rihanna, I was like, who cares? They're just nipples. Right. Where now, where now I'm like, <laughs> now that I've taken his consideration, I can see how, yeah, that could be disrespectful if I was around his friends or around my family or his family. And I'm just like, oh, who cares? Free the nipple. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> I think, yeah, it depends on the environment. But then there's also, like, a lot of girls who are like, no, like, fuck that. Like, I'll do whatever I want, you know. Okay, like but isn't that what we were just saying, though? Yeah, like, that's, like, that's like that masculine, about. like, oh, my God, I can do whatever I want. It's not about that. Yeah. Like, babe, you're free no matter what. Like, we are yeah. born free people, free man, free woman. And just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean that you're not free anymore. Yeah. Right, you're free to be, yeah. yeah, you're free to be yourself, but you also have to take other people's into you know, consideration sometimes. It's funny because, um, after here, I have to go to uh, someone's uh, housewarming, I think they're gonna go off for a little bit. And I, I was talking to my girl, and I'm like, listen, because she's, she's there already, and I'm gonna meet her after, and whatever. She and I tell her, I'm like, look, like, just if I can't go, I, I will hope that you don't come back too late because obviously, you know, scary out there. Um, you know, there's a bunch of guys that you don't even know those people, and she's like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, no, you know, just saying, like, you know, just don't stay out too late. Like, if you please come at a time that's appropriate. <laughs> okay, Dad. And just then kidding. she's like, but if I wanted to, like, I, I could, right? And I'm like, I'm like, okay, look. Um, <laughs> I'm like, you're a taken woman, okay? If you want to go out and you think that's the right thing to do, being in a relationship, by all means, do it. I may not be the right guy for you. I don't feel comfortable put for you to put yourself in that environment. Um, I think that, you know, you don't know the people that are there. You don't know, you're going to be drinking. You're going to be driving by yourself. Um, it's in a, a city where there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of things going on. You're an attractive woman. I would prefer you not to be that out, out that late and be put, putting yourself in that situation. She was a little offended. Fast forward to later on in the night. I went to work. I came back. And then she starts telling me, um, oh, we were sleeping. We live on the beach, and we hear gunshots. <laughs> and then she goes, this is why I don't like walking peaches at this time, because look how dangerous. And I'm like, oh. So you don't want to be out late <laughs> when it's convenient for you. But when I ask you to, co- to, st- to come home early, it's a problem. And then she goes, oh, my God, I know you're right. So that's kind of hot. So she sees it as like, I'm like, look, it's not like I want you to come back early because I'm your fucking father. But it's like, I know what could happen to you. I know what is going on out there. And I know how guys see things. I would rather you not put yourself in that environment or in that situation where it now makes me, it puts me in a situation where I'm like, well, I'm a little bit uncomfortable now. So it kind of goes back to boundaries. For her, she was like, look, I respect that boundary. And I told her this. I'm like, would you feel comfortable if I went to a housewarming party with people that you don't know? You don't know half, You don't know anyone that's going to be over there. We're going to be drinking. Who knows if people are going to be doing drugs. It's an environment that a taken man probably shouldn't be around with all these other women. Would you feel comfortable? And she's like, no, I wouldn't. I'm like, exactly. So why would I want to put myself in that situation? It's not worth the fight for me. It's not worth the argument. It's not worth the the can something. I'm like, dude, I'd rather just not even go if it's gonna make you uncomfortable. Obviously, I don't. I, I don't care enough to go. I'd I'd rather just be you know happy wife, happy life or yeah. whatever. So I look at her and I'm like, dude, if you don't want me to, I like I'd rather you be happy than to do something like this. Now, if it was like a 
It depends, because if if I say, "Oh, I'm gonna go to a strip club," she's gonna be like, "I don't feel comfortable Hell going no. to a yeah. strip club." But if I, but the thing is that whenever I go out, I'm either doing this, I'm either you've we've gone out. Well, I don't know if you've gone to watch the fights, but I'll be working out. Yeah. I'm here ranges with our friends, where I'm never in an environment where it's like, "Oh, there's a lot of other bitches there," but and, look, and my girl's not there. But look at my my partner's work. That is his whole environment, right? Yeah. Which is why I'm coming back to tell you, like. But you did establish the boundary though, because you yes, told them, but I can't control other people." You're friendly. You're friend. True. No, but you did tell him, "Look, you're very friendly with people. You're very friendly with other girls. I'm not comfortable." Mm -hmm. He could have said, "Like, but they're my friends. Like, you're tripping, right? Like, don't tell me how to handle my friends. Like, they were here before you. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna tell me to stop talking to my friends?" Yeah, but that? I'm your woman now. No one's before me except your mom. Well, hey, I'm your man now. I don't feel comfortable you wearing that. No, I get that. All right, oh, you, there you go. You I, see? I so get like it. But I'm the type of woman who I would take you into consideration, but you might not stumble into every that kind of woman. Some women are like, right. I, like I said, like, yeah. oh, I don't care. I'm going to wear this either way. Sure, sure, sure. And to be honest, if it was something that I loved and like, I honestly don't think there's a problem with it, then I'm going to look at you like, I don't no, see a problem right. with what it I'm wearing at all. Yeah, it has to be within reason. Yeah, yeah. You're but I also... Yeah. When when you were talking about now, while you told your girlfriend, like I understand your point of view. I don't feel comfortable sometimes knowing that my partner works at the club and there's girls drugged up, and I have witnessed girls be disrespectful in front of me with me there. I can either I have one choice. I can either overthink this to the death of me, and every time he goes to work, be like, "Oh my God, I wonder." I want the thought comes to my head. We're human. We're like, what the fuck, bitches are gonna be friendly. You know, they're gonna be drunk, and he's gonna be there DJing, and like. Come on, I'm, I've been a club girl before. I know how bitches be looking at the DJ. Like, ain't nobody come tell me, like, un cuento. Like, I know what goes on. But I need to, at the end of the day, I'd be like, okay, I can either, cho like, choose to focus my energy on that or I can already, I already express my boundaries to him. I, we already have trust yeah. in our relationship. I can't control how late he works until 6 or yeah. 7 a.m. Like, I don't have control of that. Now, I think if he went out and he was choosing to voluntarily be out to 7 or 8 in the morning, True. I'd be like, que tu buscas en la calle? Like... <laughs> I think yeah, it comes I mean, down to choice yeah, because you did, you are dating a DJ. So yeah, it is a little job. bit of a difficult environment. Almost yeah, how we talk about it. If I'm dating like a bottle girl, it's like she's We talked about this one right, time. Right, we yeah, did, yeah, we yeah. did. So then I, th I think that it's like you're more understanding, but you've at least created, you've had the conversation and you've created the boundary with him. But for me, like my girl's a, a photographer. I mean, she sometimes has shoots at night, but it's not common. So if she's like coming home at like fucking 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, I'm like, you ain't got that many shoots that. So do you uh, believe in like girls' night and like boys' night? Well, we, <laughs> we done you've done it. With what? We've had boys' nights and the girls have had girls' nights. I think it's super. It's healthy. It's important. You still, you know, people get into relationships and they just kind of lose their self wait, identity. Wait, wait. So you're still the same person. They still you're, you. You're still you. Person. Hold yeah. on, but wait. When when we say girls' nights, <laughs> what are the girls allowed to do? What do you think is an acceptable <laughs> thing for the girls? <laughs> it's fun. This is getting good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's this funny because my, my girl. We just talked about it like two nights ago. Like, oh, like she's like, oh, would you let me go to the club? Like, what? Like, without you, with one of your coworkers, she was asking me, and I'm like. <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and she, no, wait, wait, wait. Like, I'll, I'll elaborate. She's like, oh, really? Like, what about if it's somebody's, my friend's birthday and she really wants to go to a club? I'm like, oh, if you if it's your friend's birthday, she wants to go to a club, I don't have a problem. Like, that's her night. She's inviting you. It's a nice, it's like a one-time one -time thing. I don't see that that's being a problem. That's all it takes, bro. No, I don't think it's a problem. It's just a, it's, it's a <laughs> celebration. Crazy, trust issues are jumping out right no, now. No, no, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> now, if you're at a club every other week, it's like, now we're not on the same page. That's yeah. not the lifestyle that I want to live. But if Chris says, yo, I want to go to the strip club and, you know, I'm turning whatever, you know, this is a big deal for me. I want to go and have fun. My girlfriend would never tell me you can't go. Claudia's like, oh, my girl. Her name's Claudia. She's like, oh, oh go have fun. Claudia. Oh, She's Christina, the best. Christina would tell me something. Really? I don't if think I'm comfortable like about the strip club, though. Huh? Like, no, no bueno pasa in a strip club. Like, I don't think I'm comfortable the with thing the thing is, I don't, I don't know. It, I'll be honest. I don't know enough because I haven't really gone to, like, a lot of clubs or strip clubs. Yeah. So I'm very, like, naive. I remember I went to a strip club once and I just sat there and I'm like, I got there's titties in front. Like <laughs> I can see your titties, yeah. and everyone's there like throwing dollars, and I'm just there like, Claudia's grabbing her ass. Like it's just an environment that I was just confused on. So I'm not really like, fuck, I can't wait to go to another strip club. But that's the thing. It's like like my girl knows me. Like I'm not like like I, I don't need to go to a club. Like if I were to go to a strip club, I'm not gonna be like, oh, let me get fucking lap dances. Like no, like I'm not like that. I, like, I love my girl, and I lo only love her. I only want to be with her. So I she love that. so she knows me. So it's like if if Chris has we have a boys' night and we end up at a club, she would never be like, "Oh my god, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna leave? He's gonna cheat? Whatever." No, I would never. And she knows that, and so vice versa. If she's like, "Hey, it's my friend's birthday. I want to go to the club. Like she wants to go to the club, I'll be like, have fun." 
But I do believe that if you're in a relationship, there are certain places that just aren't for you. A club is one of them. So certain if it's just environments. A, certain environments. I'm sorry, yeah, certain environments. If it's a club, if it's a strip club, and if your partner's not okay with that, then you got to either respect that or you got to be single, you yeah, know? Yeah, I agree. Or what about if um your friend... Well, we asked it I about so girl trips. Girl's trip. Yeah, but no, but not even that. Let's just say, what if your your girl's friend invites her out which that friend is a oh my god you know it oh, like a grammy page um, dirty as fuck <laughs> no just the I, I would you have know like at least six people you know personally that i fucked with would you let her <laughs> no go but why her? is your girlfriend friends with her anyways yeah. though <laughs> this <laughs> is this is getting very questionable why well, no no yeah you're right no my girl my but all my girlfriends no, like no, all my girls friends friends they're good girls no, so i, I don't no. have to worry but about that says a lot about your girl yeah <laughs> no my girl has a lot of idiot friends. Yeah, but they're not like grimy bitches. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of them was a one of. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't say, I don't say. <laughs> yeah, I know. Remember. Oh, you know what I'm talking but about. But at the end of the day, my friends' choices Desastre are not my choices. Total. Mm. Huh? You what? get me? Like my friends' choices are not my choices. Like I have single friends. Actually. <laughs> Most of my friends are single, oh, right? Okay. And when I go out, let's say f- with my friends, and they say she meets a guy and stuff like that, like even if I tell my boyfriend, like, oh my god, yeah, she met this guy, he's not gonna think like, well, if she met a guy, then what were you doing? You get me? That that my friend is single. Obviously, she's gonna be putting herself out there. Like I'm taken. There's nothing yeah. going on with me. Well, your girlfriends, like your single girlfriends, have never been like, oh, you know, like there's there's this guy that I'm really interested. He has a friend. Can no. he like be like my wing no. girl or? No, my friends respect me. They would never come at me like that. Mm, if you, if like my that. friend were to come at me with some like, f your boyfriend, like kind of like low look, yeah. I would literally be like, that's the end of a friendship. Like okay. you don't take me or my man serious. Yeah, like, I, I feel like I have okay. a, I have good friends that they wouldn't they wouldn't do that to me. No. I don't know. They that's what I was about to bring up. I was like, I don't know, with the friends that I've seen that my boyfriend is around because of the environment and things like that. Sometimes I think they're the most credible, yeah. I think, A-plus guys really? of like, oh, they wouldn't cheat because I've actually witnessed a lot of cheating at the club. It's the club. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where people go to cheat. And that's why the, my man's not comfortable with this girl going because what do people do when they go to the club? Yeah, they, they cheat. cheat. They cheat. But well, not everybody. I've gone to the club without my boyfriend. It doesn't mean that I'm going to cheat. Yeah, but like it's just an environment where like, what do you want to do? You, may, maybe you dance. Maybe there's a DJ that you want to see if you're into that world. Sure, but nine times out of ten, it's it's for you to meet other guys. You know, for you to meet, meet other, other people. people. Yeah. You're bound. You're bound to get hit on. You're bound to oh, can I buy you a drink? Like you're yeah. a pretty girl. You know that's gonna happen whether you're taking or single. Someone's gonna approach you and at least be like, oh, I think you're beautiful. Can I get your number? But there's also rejection. Like how many times I reject people all the time? Be like, oh no, I have a boyfriend. Thank you. Is that you. how people approach you? I've always wondered. Yeah. How do how do what do guys say to you? Like let's say you're at the club, what do they say? Like, hey, I think you're beautiful. I want to buy you a drink. Or do they try some slick shit? Like, what's up, mommy? Nah, I think if when I've gone to the club, if I've gotten hit on, it's always on some like, I can I buy you a drink? Oh, who are you here with? Oh, your friends? Oh, I'm here with my friends. Like, I've never yes. actually. Yeah, I've had a couple creepy dudes, but so it's usually yeah. small talk, like normal talk. Yeah. Okay. I, think it's my girl I, I don't yeah. think they've ever been disrespectful like to me like too harsh well well listen when i was working as a bottle girl of course i slapped yeah. like i don't know 100 guys yeah i'll be yeah. like you called me boom don't ever call me that again yeah i, I had guys that would grab me like it was it yeah, was intense you telling us yeah you, you told us, us yeah i think it's my girl's very like she's not na- like a little bit naive she's very nice she's very friendly like not in a disrespectful way, but she's like oh, like in like fucking lala yeah that's what i'm saying yeah, that's what my boyfriend really is f- she's super friendly and then the guys are like She's yeah, I, I have a yes, shot. but that's what I'm saying. That's why I had to put my boundary because yeah. my boyfriend's like that too. He's like innocente, like oh no, they're just being nice. I'm like that bitch wants to fuck you. She's yeah. not being nice, bro. Yeah. Open your damn eyes. Yeah. But some people, I I appreciate people like that though because sometimes it's better to be oblivious. Like sure, yeah. Some yes. sometimes your girlfriend probably has a piece of time because she's probably yeah. like, oh, he was just being nice. Yeah. Where there's someone who's aware is like this weird ass dude. I can't believe that. So. I don't know because then they're just so naive, and by the time they realize they're they're like deep in the weeds, and it's like <laughs> now this guy really thinks he has a shot with you. Yeah. He's re- getting fresh with you, probably trying to you know like building up that rapport. I don't know if I like that. No, I don't. No, don't I don't like, like that, that either. Either. I don't like that. No, no, either. no. no. I mean, dude. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I I, I think uh, it's just coming I mean, getting to your partner, but like there's some places that I just don't, certain environments. I think you know if you're in a relationship, you should avoid it as best as possible. I, I just don't think that you should let your partner leave the house ever. <laughs> yeah. Spoken okay. like a true Cuban man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, as soon as she gets home, bop, bop. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Get it. I wanted to kind of start closing it off with we did a couple like a Q and A, and like mm-hmm. we have a couple oh, questions. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I just wanted to maybe like mention them and maybe you can give us. 
perspective. Okay, let's do it. Okay, there's one. This one's actually a good one. Uh, it says, how did you know when when to let go of the person you loved? Ooh. When it was actually all destruction when it came to me. Mm. When it was like, I am loving you and you're destroying me. So I'm going to have to let you go. Because if not, I'm going to destroy myself. Yeah. That kind of. Yeah, well, I'm destroying myself, putting myself in the position to be with you. I think that's when I knew to let go of even friends and um, past partners. Can you go for another one? How did you know when to let go of the person you love? Damn, what a good question. Yeah, but I've, uh, but it's not only in relationships. Like, I've let go of friends that I'm like, you know what? This friendship is becoming destructive. You're not influencing me in the best way. And I love you, but for yeah. the sake of me and where I'm headed, can't drag you with me. I'm going to have to let you go. Maybe we can revisit the friendship when you're in a better mentality or, or you can influence me in a good way. But right now, you're actually holding me back. Uh, I'm going to have to go. Yeah, for sure. For me, I mean, same thing. I mean, it's obviously you can think of it platonic, you can think of it romantic. In terms of, like, friendships, it's for me, it's always, like, the effort, right? We talk about it all the time. But if I'm the only person who reaches out and tries to maintain the relationship, to me, it's like a, how much longer I'm going to put myself out there for you to just be on the receiving end. It's like... It's two way street, right? Like if I only reach out and you don't put in the effort, well, after a while I'm gonna be like, you know what? I'm just gonna have to remove myself from the situation because it's not, it's not fair for me to be the only person to always reach out or always kind of rekindle or always kind of sustain the relationship. It's not right. So that's that. That's, that's what you my need. answer. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. You? Um, I like the question. For me, um, you know, it's funny because I take relationships very seriously. And you can even ask my girlfriend, um, even my friends, like I care. I really do care. And that's why I'm always exhausted because I feel like I try to put time to all my friends. Yesterday I went to the movies with Range. It was only us two. We watched Mission Impossible, <laughs> whatever the fuck that last one came out. Um, but, you know, I tried. And then tomorrow after after we record here, we're, we're going to plan to record. I'm going to be seeing, I think, Dario with some other one of his friends that he invited me to, to go meet him or whatever. And I do that because I care. I care about Range. I care about Dario. Like, you know, and I care about when people think of me. You know, I, I, I'm like, shit, of course I would want to. Like, you know, you thought of me. Let me try. Drives me insane. But at the same time, I do approach it very logically as well. Because when I feel like I start getting fucked over or I don't get these, I'm not reciprocated on effort. Or I feel like there's, I'm moving at a different speed than you are. And there's, there's only so much that I can hold on to your hand mm -hmm. before I got to let go. Unless you catch up. Like yeah, yeah. Then we can have keep you're gonna, going. Yeah, you're, you're gonna keep me dragged down. It's I, I, I'm, I hope to inspire you one yep. day to run as fast as I do. But right now is not the time. Listen, you're not the only person. You're not my only friend. And for my partner, uh, you're not the only girl in this world. As much mm -hmm. as I love you, I'll do anything for you, and I'm extremely happy and I'm supportive. I feel like the luckiest man in the world. Mm -hmm. But there's way too many people out there for me to believe that you're the only person that can make me happy. That's how I approach it. I'm very logical with it. It's a little bit cold, but I also know when it's time to let go. I don't want to be dragged through something. I'm not going to abuse myself or over leverage myself. I've done that already, and I've learned where that takes me. Um, I think that there's a time where you that you you kind of just get exhausted, where you're just tired of mm -hmm. feeling that way, where you're like, this is this is my breaking point. I, I agree. Away. Very well. I don't said. think it's cold though. I think it's I'm cutthroat like that too. I've I've cut people off from ten to tomorrow, and I'm like, look, I'm cutting you off. Yeah, this is not yeah, working yeah. out. You're not being good for me. I think there's been too many disrespectful things along the way. This is done, and I th I think the more secure you are, the you, the more comfortable you are with making those decisions because yeah. you're like, I'm yeah. not gonna second doubt myself. Like yeah. I know I've been through this already. It's done. Exactly. Get me. Exactly. And that's what I learned. And it's funny because that's also what we what we try to teach into the book. It's how to build that security within yourself and and that self confidence for you to feel comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. We always try to compete and try to be someone that we're not. And it's like if we embrace who we really are and, and and really make the most of it, we really are grateful for what we have. There's people who would who are envious of the things that we have, even if we're we're upset about them. Mm -hmm. And it's like. You know, just, again, be grateful, and then you'll see that you, you start accepting and receiving a lot of positive energy. And the right people will come along as well. A hundred percent. Wow. Mm -hmm. Next question. Next question. This is a two-part question. Who's in charge of the finances in a relationship? And then household. Can women lead? Well, we talked about this a little bit. We did. Yeah. We did. I think, of course, we are the leaders. We are, we're the ones that give 
life into this earth. We're definitely the leaders. Even if you say men lead, women follow. At the end of the day, you guys come out of us. You get me? We I, I believe that women are meant to be praised. Okay. And I believe that women were the portals to life. And I think we need to be respected. We need to be valued. We need to be, like I said, praised. There should be an altar and every single one of us is on it. But I think you <laughs> need to know that you belong in the altar in order to be praised. Mm. Well, I think you got to be a good woman, though. A yeah. good woman to be praised. Yeah, but a good woman knows that she she deserves to be on there. True. And Thus, that she deserves to yeah, be praised. And that she can no, lead. There's some women that feel like because they're women, um, they're entitled to that certain treatment I because they're women. Well. And I think that that's where it's a little bit unfair for men because then you have good men that try to be good men, but they're to these women that are not good women. And then they try to put them on a platform, and they're just not appreciative of it because that's just I get that. how they should be. But mm. mentally, those women are not on the platform themselves. You get that. Like, if a man is trying to put this woman on the pedestal and she's, like, acting like she doesn't belong on there, then that just tells you you're trying to pull her up and she's mentally just down there. Yeah. So just you have to leave people where they're at. Well, we just came back to that. And to mm. the first part of that question, yeah, gonna... who was, like, who's in charge of the finances i feel like you both need to be in charge of the finances <laughs> it doesn't matter which money comes in you both need to <laughs> look funny. at the money I and like be like how are we gonna handle we're the money? both in charge of your money babe <laughs> <laughs> your money's my money like and my money's like my money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no a lot of people think like that but no i actually believe that both people should be in charge of the finances because yeah, yeah. just because you're the breadwinner doesn't mean that you're the best at managing it you, my man can make a million dollars and he doesn't know how to manage the money and maybe I'm better to be like, well, I think we should budget on here and maybe we should spend it on this and maybe we should hold back on buying that. So I think both people it's should have an input. It's a it, it, 100%. Even before, like Larry, dear friend of mine, he, oh, he was just taking were. the pictures and he was, t we were talking a little I bit before. I walked in on you guys. When yeah. You were talking about this, right? Yeah, like the finances and he's like, yeah, like she makes, she's a breadwinner. She makes a lot of money in terms of their relationship and but he, f he, he handles the finances. Exactly. So because it's a team effort, maybe she is not really e too equipped with the finance. Yeah. Maybe she's a little bit la 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 land. But he's like, yo, this is what we can spend. This is what we can save, and et cetera, et cetera. Just because you make less doesn't mean you have less access to the decisions that are need to be made exactly. when it comes to finance. They just have to I be wise that. decisions for have the to collective be party. Yeah, which is yeah you have goals. You have individual goals and goals together. So. Exactly. Perfect. Love it. Oh. <laughs> If you know someone is getting cheated on, <laughs> but you're not close to that person, should you tell them? No. Mind your business, bro. Just focus on your own life. That's what I think. If you know someone is getting cheated on, but you're not, not close, should, should you, you tell, tell them? them? I think it depends on the <laughs> level of closeness, but like, if I don't know you, yeah. why am I going to get involved? <laughs> Look, that ain't my business, no, no, bro. No, no, I've learned even close. I'm not telling you shit. Even if they're close? No, no, no. It's going to bite you in the no. ass. They will get back together, and then you're the bad one that, oh, but she told her, or, oh, she she snitched on, on me and said that I cheated. People, but my mom always tells me this. I think it's, entre marido y mujer, nadie se puede meter. And that's a fact. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to be a good friend, and I'm like, hey, babe, by the way, like I saw your man doing this. Like I'm looking out for you. If she's in love with him, bro, you're the third person. <laughs> you get me? Like, she's going to look at him like, you cheated on me? <laughs> Dalia told me. Uh, you get me? Yeah. And then, of course, your name is going to get dropped like this. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> at the end of the day, unless you're my best friend and I tell you, name drop me. I don't give a shit. Like, I saw him. I'm your best friend. Tell him. But if it's a situation where you really have no business, like you're her friend, but you know that she's in a toxic you're relationship You're like doing them him. a favor. Yeah, yeah. Just, so. just let people learn on their own. She's going to find out. To me, just, it depends how close I am to that person. Uh, yeah. But but at the same time, like if if I get involved in, in your lie or in your your deception, whatever, then then I'm gonna stand up and be like, if you don't tell them, I will. Because I'm not gonna be part of this fucking bullshit. Like I get if, that. If, if if you fuck up and you fuck around and we all hang out and you you know I know that you fuck up and you're not willing to tell I'm gonna be like either you tell Christina or I will. Because yeah. I'm not going to be part yeah, of it. Yeah, Chris is like, damn. That's I'm not, that's yeah, good, but it's good. Though. But because, it's like, if she comes she comes to our, she, to my house, we I have agree. dinner, we laugh, we smile, we make memories. I'm not going to sit across from her at the dinner table fucking, oh, my God, you're fucking awesome, knowing that he's fucking around. Like, uh, that's that's not But it's because you guys are good people. We're good people. That, we, that no, and also because we have this, I'm not going to fucking tolerate that. And I would hope that he would stand up and do the same. For, for my partner. Well, sometimes you need that good friend and even you can not save each other from, let's say, like, there was a cheating 
situation or temptation sometimes it's that good friend that reminds you like yo like you have something good don't forget that yeah and it's, n- it's not only that it's also um because think about it let's say that were the case and then you go and you tell christina yeah right can i really be mad at you like you mad at me? <laughs> you just be mad at yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So it's like well, yeah. I'm a fucking hypocrite for yeah. being upset yeah. at him when I'm the one doing the fuck up. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So it's almost like I'm putting you in that position. Yeah. yeah. How dare I? Yeah. Put you put in you. that situation. Mm-hmm. So how selfish? Yeah. Of me to try to like. Hey, no, well, and how like entitled you are to expect people to just be lying for you. Exactly. Like, why do yeah. I have to lie for you? Like, I that's, literally that's shouldn't. That's my mindset now. Like, that's yeah. why you said, like, don't drag me into your lie. Because yeah. then I hang out with, like, your girl. And then she's like, oh, babe, did you see him? And I'm like, no, I didn't see him at the club. I have no idea. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. now I'm lying. <laughs> now you made me scoop down to your vibration on your level of, like, deceit. Like, yeah, yeah, being deceptive. Dece- so let me ask you. Being, no, no, no. What if you are not so close to this person, but you were at this event and her man was there? And she knows of you, and she's like, I hate to put you in this situation, girl, but I know that you were at this party. I'm super weird. You know this person and my man. I think he was trying to hook up with her. I think she's your friend. Did you see them do anything? Don't put me in that position. I know I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to go talk to your man. If you are if you have to come and ask me about your relationship, your relationship is already broken. Uh, you get me? Why are you coming to me to ask about your man? Text your man. <laughs> like, why? no, I've been in this exact same situation. And shout out to my girl. She, she texted me on some exact situation, and I told her, I don't know why you're texting me. I owe you nothing. Your man is the one that owes you an explanation. And t- to answer your questions, I, as your friend, as we're not super close. Me, as someone that you know, I, I don't feel comfortable being in the middle of you guys because I know you both. So why are you putting me in, in the middle right, like a okay. scapegoat? It's like, at the end of the day, you guys are going to get back together. And yeah. then la mala soy yo. So yeah. I'm like, then no. I'm the bitch. <laughs> yeah. So I've learned, like, I under- and I understand that moment of, like, desperation that women come from when they reach out to a friend. They're like, babe, please tell me, like, did you see him cheating on me? I understand that pain. I've been I've been in those shoes and I've done that. But I've understood why people lied to me and didn't tell me. Because at the end of the day, I was not going to listen to anybody. I needed to learn on my own that I wasn't with the right person. Damn, it sucks because uh, one of my boys, he... he <laughs> Back in the day, man, he would cheat on his girl all the time. Like, I felt like shit. Because then I had to look at this girl. And I remember one time she asked me, we're out. Aww. And my boy wasn't with me. And we, we were, and we were going to go. And it was like a, a big group. And, and his girlfriend was there. And he wasn't there. And we were always together. And I show up. And then she's like, tell me the truth. Oh, my God, no. Is he doing this? And I look at her. And I'm like, he's not here. You can do whatever you want. But he's not here. Okay, I get that. But you gave, that was, you were telling her, maybe he's not the one. Because I felt bad. I'm like, dude, I don't want to lie to you, but I am I also don't want to do that to my boy. So I'm almost like, look, he's not here. Take it for what it so is. So what do you Touch think? It. Yeah, yeah. You deal with it. I told her like that. It was such an uncomfortable situation. Because like, you're just walking in there, and then you get hit with the, <laughs> yo, is he cheating on me? And you're like, uh, 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 I wasn't prepared for this. Mm-hmm. I wasn't prepped. What Here's another one. Torn between family and your partner. Your family's saying your partner is changing you. Mm. What is it? But is that always a bad thing? What's the question? Wait, what is it? Torn between family and your Torn partner. Torn between family and your partner. Your family. family's saying your partner is changing you. Yeah. Is it for the better or for the worse, though? Well, presumably for the worse in this case, no? I think sometimes people are not comfortable with watching you grow. And they want you to stay stagnant with them. And this creates a lot of friction when it comes to friendship <laughs> and family and you getting into a relationship and changing. Of course you're going to change. You're meant to be changing throughout your whole life. If you've been 10 years the same, then there's a problem. Because you, you're meant to, like, transcend. And you're meant to evolution. True. Like, there's evolution throughout. Like, think about it. We sat here two years ago. I'm a different person. I've yeah. changed. Yeah, because it'd be par- partially because of my partner. Maybe. But it's for the better. So it shouldn't make anyone in my life feel uncomfortable. I think in this situation, we don't know. So is it? are you changing for the better? Or are you becoming a drug addict and, yeah, and losing yeah. and losing your priorities? And yeah, your family is right. Your friends are right to be like, yo, you're changing. And you're actually losing things that are yourself. Now, if you're changing for the better and your family or your friends have a problem, then you need to consider those friendships and those family ties because they don't want to see you grow and they don't want to see you be the best you. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the same exact thing because sometimes other people have a plan for you without really telling you. And so then they see that you're not following the plan that they had in their head for you. And then they're almost like, wait, but you used to be like this. What happened? Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, I I changed. Like I grew up. Like or they get tied to to you, like to your life, and it's like, how come you're not providing this for me anymore? It's like, 
you're my friend. Like I don't, I, I'm allowed to change and not live the same lifestyle that you used of to course, live. Of course, of course, we're all changing. Damn, fucking assholes. <laughs> you got another question there? Porn addiction. <laughs> What about it? You know about porn addiction? I don't. I don't know anything about okay. porn addiction. Do yeah. I? <laughs> you do? Uh, general topic of mental health. We've talked about. We've mental talked health. about mental health. I don't do we have any any other? No. I did one. Do you guys want to see mine? You yeah. got you got some short. Yeah, let's knock those out. Let's wrap let's it up. See. So. Let's wrap it up. I'm tired. I'm gonna I gotta go all the way to fucking. It's that Q and A thing, right? Yeah. I think I have a couple good ones. We'll mention one. I feel like I'm going to pick one that's like, okay, I would want to talk about this. Okay, okay. Let us know. Let me see. Here we go. How do I go? My thing's archived, right? Yeah. You go to archive, archive click stories. on it, and then scroll up. I mean, okay. yeah, like kind of Like pop stories, it up. and then I yeah. go look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eric just copied. Okay, let me see. Oh, I think this might be a good one. Hmm. Okay. Someone said, my partner thinks I'm cheating, and overthinking doesn't help him. And he isn't cheating. What else do I do? So her boyfriend thinks that she's cheating on him, but she's not. But he's not cheating either. So what is she meant to do? How does he? How does she know he's not cheating? That's what I was thinking. Well, guys, I don't know. This is this is just what she said <laughs> to wow, me. Wow, you <laughs> listening, listener, fellow listener, um, up to this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. How do you know that he's not cheating? The first thing I would say is that is a guilty conscience. That's the first flag I would say. Like, so make sure you you check that box. Yeah. Is is he having a guilty conscience, thinking that you're cheating? Because nine times out of ten, if someone thinks that you're cheating, is because they're getting away with it. So they want to check in on you to see if you're getting away with it the same way that they're getting away with it. So check that box first. <laughs> make sure that if they're accusing you, fucking be like, yo, if you think I'm cheating, let me see your phone right quick. And then see what they say. And at that point, then you can yeah. have a determination. If they panic or if I can throw the phone out the window. Yeah. <laughs> what <right>. phone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, gotta, hey. you, gotta, you, got, you got you got the answer. Um, but yeah, 100%. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's like if, if you can't overcome like the insecurities or the, the cheating, the jealousy, then that is not a per person that you're meant to be with. You know, and I get it. We all, I used to be very insecure, very jealous. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of things that I was doing, going back to what he was saying, behind my partner's back. That amplified those insecurities. That amplified. Because you're like, jealousy. I'm doing it. So are you? Yeah, I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting away with this. So she has to be doing something too. And it's like, obviously, this was many moons ago. I would never do it again. But you, you really have to look within and see: Is this the life that I want to live with this person? If, if, if this person keeps accusing me of stuff, then you know what? Ma then we should be together. If you don't, if you can't trust me, then why are you with me? Yeah, dude. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because it's Fuck that. It's what I said a little bit earlier. It's like th this, this person is not the only guy or girl yeah. or whatever you're going to date in your life like there's a thousands of millions, millions of, people of people on this there. planet gonna, <laughs> on this planet you're going to meet like an, another ten hundred thousands of people uh, many other people and if not get out there to meet those people but at the end of the day why do you want to live and stay in a relationship with somebody who's going to constantly harass you about you possibly cheating when you're not Check, yeah, check the phone, your location, where you've been, it's who you with. So do you want to be living a life like yeah. this, you, living a life like that? I don't understand. Like, you can find somebody else that's going to match with you and vibe with you a little bit better in a healthier environment. I'd say give them a shot. Yeah. You know, it's, this isn't the, the only this what, relationships yeah. aren't supposed to be that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and what's the worst that could happen? You lose somebody that was jealous of, of yeah, the life that you were living. Yeah, that I didn't mean, trust you and didn't really even care to be with you because... <laughs> They didn't trust you? Yeah. Yeah. Point. Nice yeah. one. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I think in my eyes, if she thinks that, well, if her partner thinks that she's cheating, I would first definitely take out the box of like, are you cheating? Is that what you have a guilty conscience yeah. of me? But then I would also be like, what What am I doing that's making you think that I'm cheating? True. You get me? Because what is she doing that he's like, you're cheating on me? Yeah. You get me? That I think that like, what is triggering you? I think in that moment, yes, we can easily be like, oh, you're insecure, but... Maybe just if you want to stay together, it's about finding like, okay, what am I doing that's triggering you? I'm making you think that I'm cheating on you. Yeah. Is it because my actions, you're linking them to actions of your past, which is very, very like normal in a relationship. My boyfriend might do something that a past partner of mine did when they were cheating on me. And I might be like, are you cheating on me? Because you're doing the same thing. That right, 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 right. Mm. But you're not cheating on me. It's just yeah. because I'm linking you to my trauma and now I'm trying to like relate you to something and all I know is the past so instead of taking the experience of my maybe my boyfriend this he could just be texting and I'm on the other side like he's texting a girl because 
my past partner used to sit across from me and text a girl. So maybe her partner, she might just be doing regular things, and he's just assuming, like, oh, she must be cheating on me. Because my ex would be on her phone and text another dude. Exactly, but in reality, maybe she could just, if you want to stay with him and you want to make it work, it's like, okay, what am I doing? That's making you think that I'm cheating on you. And let's work on your triggers. Yeah. And maybe when I'm texting and you think I'm texting somebody, just sit next to me so that you can see that I'm just scrolling through Instagram. You get me? If you want to make it work with this person and help them heal. Because sometimes you do stumble across good people that are just broken people. Yeah. And maybe you could heal together and grow together. It's not always just like cutthroat. You're insecure. I don't want to be with you. Yeah. Sometimes you could try to make it work. That was me. I'm like, yeah, fuck them. Who cares? There's a thousand other people. I know. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like make like, it work. Make it work. No, you can make it work. Nah, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have two options, guys. Exactly. You can either fuck them and get out of there, or you can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're giving you a hard time after you're doing everything to make them comfortable, then yeah, like, bro, I'm doing everything for you to feel comfortable in this relationship. I I'm, have, I'm, I'm yeah. working with you on your triggers. Like, you need to be in mystery on your own and handle that shit because I'm not going to be with you. Too. Yeah, first step, try it. Talia, second step, it doesn't yeah. work. Chris's oh ride God, is going to <laughs> burn the place down. <laughs> 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 Did you have something else, or was that the good one that you had? All good? Um, I feel like that was the good one that I had. That's perfect. fine. It's perfect. Well, yeah, we're yeah. getting to. So, it. with that being said, yeah. guess I'm gonna do. No, I said. was just too tall. Yeah, we could go on for hours, but obviously, I know. it's uh, it's been two. Yeah. Maybe that's enough for tonight. Oh my well, god, it's we, been two. Well, a lot of it's gonna get uh, cut down. Yeah, the beginning. I think the first like ten minutes and maybe some. We'll clean yeah, some stuff up. We've been talking most of it. Yeah, though, let's be honest. For sure, for sure. But I think your boyfriend is expecting you. And yes. your lady's expecting you, and uh, my bed is expecting me. <laughs> 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 I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I like that. Well, with that being said, we always have, uh, we end with the uh, final thoughts. It's time to break up. Um, anything that you'd like to say to your younger self, anything that you'd want to say to the world, or just a message that's very important to you that you want to share, you say it to the camera, say it to us, and then sell yourself on where they can find you. So you said a message that I would tell my younger self. That could be it, if that's the option. I would tell my younger self that, her mission the whole time was to help other people and less about the material world. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would tell my younger self. And that I would tell people out there as well. Sometimes we go through life chasing this purpose and what am I meant to do? What's my mission? And oh my God, what's my calling? And I think at the end of the day, we're on this earth to help one another. And I think Serve. once you relate what you do to serving people and helping people, everything just starts working out for you it, 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 i feel like it starts falling into place we'll stop yes. pursuing certain things like oh what is my my purpose what am i meant to do mm -hmm. do the startup with doing the things that make you happy to bring you life to fulfill you yep. and then it, it's like a puzzle it'll come together you it know, comes together once you touch reach your hand out and touch community yes. and you and you impact someone's life i feel like that is where where you're gonna find your your true happiness yeah love that that's true yeah and and, and to summarize it, it, it's true because especially with the podcast, like I learn about it more and more of how like how valuable it is. When whenever we get someone that writes to us and says, "Hey guys, you have no idea how much mm -hmm. you've changed," they changed it's so me. Beautiful. I've learned, dude. Eso me da algo. Like I'm just like, I'm just some guy in Miami who had an idea, you know, of just wanting to help people. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a bunch of you guys that we have helped that you guys haven't reached out to us, and we would love those messages. We <laughs> love, you. We love <laughs> you as well. We love you still. Um, but whenever you have someone that just takes the time to write to you when they don't have to, mm -hmm. man, that means something. And they open up to you, and it's beautiful that you, we have that energy that people feel comfortable enough that to open something. themselves up and share their lives with us. Absolutely. So if you want to share your life with us, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, where We love to hear different stories, and we also like to have some feedback, any ideas, any topics. Please feel free to, to DM us, or you can email us at uh, coffeebreakup.com at gmail. Oh, that's right. The coffeebreakup at gmail.com. We got to. We, we got to decide which one we're going to be using. Okay. Coffeebreakup at gmail.com. Alia, thank you so much. Thank you, you guys angel. for having You've me. Been amazing. You were amazing. Yeah. You're awesome. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, take care, guys. Until next time. Time to break up. Bye bye, guys. Peace. Ciao.